Welcome everyone to the Market City Commission agenda, Monday, May 13th, 2013. Meeting call to order at 7 p.m. in the Commission Chambers. Would everybody join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. City Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Commissioner Kimbenzi. Here. Commissioner Coyne. Here. Commissioner Ryan. Here. Commissioner Snyder. Here. Commissioner Stonehouse. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Nimi. Here. And Mayor DiPietro. Present. Uh, let the record show all seven commissioners present. Uh, commissioners, any... Uh, Note of agenda changes. Commissioner Nemi. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a number of a number of changes that I'd like to the commission to entertain tonight. Uh, the first would be a suspension of the rules and the movement of proclamations four through eight to the consent agenda. Second, I would like to have items sixteen through twenty put on the consent agenda. Uh, item 16 is a is a routine bid upon which we're we're awarding to the lowest responsible bidder. There's no controversy there. And item 17, 18, 19, and 20 are leases of one form or another, which the new charter requires that they be introduced in one meeting and acted. They can't be acted on at the same meeting they're introduced to. So we'd be introducing them tonight via the consent agenda and taking them up uh, next uh, at our next meeting and. Uh, the two of them are deal with the rowing club, but we'll still have the presentation of the rowing club, rowing club at on item three. So they can be, any discussion of them can happen at that point. Thank you, Commissioner Nemi. Second support. Commi support by Commissioner Coyne. Commissioner Nemi, anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor. Commissioner Coyne. Um, I would like to uh, move to approve. The consent agenda, with the exception of reimbursements to Commissioners Stonehouse, Cambenzi, and uh, Mayor DePietro. Um, I think the attorney has a point of order. Yeah, I think we have to vote on the first the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. And then we can do the, your. Sorry. Excuse me. Is there any further questions on this motion by Commissioner Nemi and seconded by Commissioner Coyne? Seeing none, all in favor say yes. 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 Motion passes seven to zero. If you want, we can wait till we get to the consent agenda. And I'll okay. Okay. Um, moving forward, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Commissioner Ryan. I move we approve the, con the agenda as amended. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner uh, Schneider. Support. Anything further, Commissioner Ryan? No, no. Commissioner Schneider, all in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. <coughs> Thank you. At this time, I got a couple announcements to make. Uh, Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, two vacancies. Housing Commission, one vacancy. Local Officers Compensation Commission, three openings. Planning Commission, two vacancies. Uh, Regional Recreation Authority Business Plan Ad Hoc Committee, one alternate opening. Sister City Advisory Committee, three openings. Sustainable Community, Community Ad Hoc Committee, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board Rep, one vacancy. Traffic Parking Advisory Committee, one vacancy. Thank you. With that, we move to number one public hearing, City Clerk. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor, background. This is a public hearing to review the, uh, the plan, uh, development plan for a planned unit development at 975 Lakeshore Boulevard. Background, <clears throat> the Planning Commission held a public hearing on April 2nd, 2013 to review the development plan for PUD case 01-PUD-02-13 and unanimously passed the following motion. It was moved by 
Uh, Lori seconded by CLIP and carried 7-0 that after review of the PUD site plan dated 03-05-13 and the staff file review and analysis for 01 PUD-02-13, the Planning Commission who previously established that the PUD met 7 of 10 criteria to be eligible for a PUD recommends that the PUD be approved by the City Commission for the following reasons which are recommendations of the master plan. One, it encourages mixed-use development. <coughs> Two, another use of brownfield site. Three, promotes all-season tourism. Four, a redevelopment of former industrial and underutilized properties. Five, encourages diversity of, <coughs> of housing options. And six, encourages infill and reuse as alternatives to green, greenfield development. Mr. Laurie stated that the plan is interesting and attractive, but cautions the applicants to familiarize themselves with the local ordinance and ordinances and etc. In accordance with the city zoning ordinance, the city commission shall conduct a public hearing to review the planning commission's recommendation. If the city commission concurs with the planning commission's recommendation and approves the PUD, the city attorney is to prepare a PUD contract. A complete packet of the background information for this PUD is, has been provided. Uh, fiscal effect none. Recommendation conduct a public hearing and consider the Planning Commission's recommendation to approve PUD 01 PUD 02 13 and if approved, direct the City Attorney to prepare a PUD contract. Alternatives as determined by the Commission. Thank you, City Clerk. Anyone wishing to address the Commission during this public hearing? Sir, you can come up. Please state your name and fiscal address, please. Uh, Ken Schollen from Appleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Sue Schollen from Appleton, Wisconsin. And i um, just excited to be at this spot a year after we started the PUD process. And um, are we on? And we're looking forward to starting to build, still working on some things, but just uh, grateful for the process actually and I think we've created a with our architects um, a wonderful uh, property and it's going to be lovely and um, Mike Lempinen of John Larson Architects has uh, has created with our concept uh, a very beautiful slideshow so he's going to show that right now so thank you again thank you yes thank you Mike Lempinen, 117 Kivola Road, Nagani Township. I work with John Larson Architect and have had the privilege of working with the Shalins on the proposed uh, nestle down bed and breakfast uh, on, at 975 Lakeshore Boulevard. I have a, a brief presentation to show you some virtual images that we developed to show you what this uh, proposed development may look like uh, should it be approved. Uh, this is a view right from Lakeshore Boulevard looking northwesterly. This is the former uh, pattern building uh, property that you're familiar with of uh, Lakeshore Incorporated. Um, it's uh, located right on uh, Lakeshore Boulevard, right across the road from Picnic Rocks. Note the design is traditional. Uh, we're even trying to pick up some uh, uh, Scandinavian design in, in the building itself. It's two stories. Uh, 3,100 square feet on the first floor, about 2,800 square feet on the second with a basement. Uh, the uh, owners intend to live here as well as provide uh, bed and breakfast lodging for four rooms with bathroom and one uh, suite for uh, their guests. Um, as I said, the owners would be living in this portion of the building on the uh, sort of the southerly side and the bed and breakfast units would be to the North, northerly side, as well as an apartment building on top of the garage, which is on the site. They intend to landscape the site uh, extensively, um, and uh, we tried to indicate some of that <coughs> with the slideshow here. You can see the owner's entrance view of the uh, garage facility, which will have an apartment dwelling above uh, for family uh, to use when they're visiting the area. Uh, at the rear of the facility, this is the facade of the building facing Park Place. Uh, they plan a um, small outdoor terrace. 
Uh, this is a view from roughly just inside the roadway that leads to uh, Park Place. And what you see in the, in the middle foreground is a uh, seating area, which they hope to provide for guests uh, in the evenings of the inn. Note the outbuilding here that's intended to be a storage building, but also provide uh, covered seating for guests in the evening as well. Behind that building, you can see the fence and uh, numerous trees, which separates the tree and uh, the property from Park Place. Another view slightly down the road, back toward that seating area as well. Note the tall trees on the left of the slide. Those are existing trees. They hope to keep some of the existing trees on site uh, to enhance the landscaping. A view from across the street in the uh, general direction of uh, Picnic Rocks Park. They like to provide some uh, seating and um, uh, walking and pedestrian amenities in the form of benches along the sidewalk on Lakeshore Boulevard. One of the more attractive aspects of this site for the Shawlands is the fact that it is close to, of course, Picnic Rocks, beautiful views of Lake Superior, and also close to the biking walking trail in Marquette. Another view of the main entrance off of Lakeshore Boulevard. By the way, the basement of this facility are hoping to put a sauna, therefore uh, uh, reinforcing the Scandinavian theme. You see a lot of these types of vernacular buildings in Scandinavia. In fact, this is taking its inspiration from one of the famous bed and breakfast uh, manor houses of Finland. We have some views that show the building as uh, dusk approaches. The owners hope to live here as well as well as provide lodging for their guests. You can see a piece of the Lakeshore warehouse in the background on this slide. Getting toward evening, um, beautiful place to uh, stay at, I think, uh, with its access to the park. Uh, we open up to questions, if we can uh, help you with any uh, questions or comments at this time. Thanks. Commissioners? Uh, okay. Thank you. We're going to continue with uh, public hearing, then we'll get back to you in a little bit. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time on the, uh, to review the development plan for plan unit development at 975 Lakeshore Boulevard? Right, Jeff Barrico, 350 East Ridge Street, Marquette. These are my opinions. No doubt a bed and breakfast is a good fit for the Lakeshore location. Of concern, though, is the cumulative effect of other recent developments along the boulevard for all to see and to judge for themselves, such as a house jutting into the curve with minimum setback and no landscaping effort to shield that new eyesore from Shiras Park. Then there's a matter of four residential curb cuts already leaving the <coughs> Lakeshore site in a situation where with even the most rudimentary design effort, only two were necessary. Now comes an applicant with a legitimate cause, but it means another building along the boulevard, another curb cut, another sign, and little, a little bit more traffic. Their building looks nice so long as the cedar exterior is stained in earth tone. As we just saw, it looks a little bit too reddish. You know, a cedar color would probably be more appropriate for that location. The site plan also indicated the incorporation of good landscaping features as judged from what was in the agenda packet. <clears throat> a legend would better help assure us of what the features were, as would have uh, been a rendering showing the, uh, depicting how the building would look with the landscaping features in place. Now judging from what we've just seen here tonight for the first time, more shielding from the boulevard and from Shiras Park would be nice. In fact, this would also benefit the guests who would then enjoy the most rustic in-town experience possible. As is, the building looks a little bit too open from the boulevard. Another concern is that as new businesses are added along scenic stretches, there's the inevitable pressure and impact upon the very resources that attracted the business to such locations to begin with. Soon they want the trees on adjacent properties thinned or removed to enhance their view of whatever natural feature applies, in our case, Lake Superior. <clears throat> There are a thousand examples of this progression across the country from us to learn from, but we've had few commissioners who have ever expressed their concern about such frivolity. 
As a result, our community is at the mercy of the developers because we know by too many documented examples that this commission won't lift a finger to avert a land use blunder, even when warned in detail ahead of time. We beg the developer to please use earth tones, to please buffer the buildings from the boulevard, to please bury all power lines, to please shield all lighting from the boulevard, which by what we just saw looks okay, and to please never assert any pressure upon the city to cut or to thin trees across the boulevard. I want exactly what visitors to Marquette and to a rustic bed and breakfast want, a natural experience, <laughs> because this is one of the last micropolitan cities in which they stand a chance of finding one. It's easy to see how the bed and breakfast owners, Marquette City residents, and our visitors all share a common goal. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? This is just for this PUD. If you want to address that, you may, but you don't want to? Okay. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Seeing one, I'll turn it over to my uh, fellow commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Ryan. I'd like to move we approve PUD 01, PUD 02 13 and direct the city attorney to prepare a PUD contract. Thank you, sir. Second. Commissioner uh, Stonehouse. I will second that motion. Thank you. Commissioner Ryan. I think they've gone through the process. I think this has been very well vetted by the uh, Planning Commission. Uh, in his report, the attorney read some of the reasons why the uh, why the uh, Planning Commission feels this is a good, uh, a good project, including encouraging mixed-use development, another use of a brownfield site, promoting tourism, a redevelopment of former industrial property, encouraging diversity of housing options, and encourages infill and reuse as alternatives to greenfield projects. All good, solid reasoning as far as I'm concerned. I think when we first, <coughs> when we first dealt with this issue Perhaps it was a year ago. It was a zoning issue at that time. And I know there were some concerns on the part of the neighborhood because we were uh, rezoning. And, th and they chose to go in this PUD direction, which uh, really deals with those issues. And uh, looking at the uh, testimony before the uh, Planning Commission, I see where the, uh, the uh, neighbors who were concerned in the past are fully supportive of this project. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse. <laughs> Well, I think uh, Commissioner Ryan did a great job of laying out all the technical reasons for it, for it being a great project. I can only say that I think it's a great fit for the area. I think it's a great fit for the city. I think our visitors will, will really enjoy the opportunity, and I think our residents will enjoy seeing that opportunity and people enjoying what they get to, get to have every day. So I, I wish them great luck with the project. Thank you. Any other commissioner wishing to address this item? Seeing none. Is moved uh, by Commissioner Ryan, seconded by Commissioner Stonehouse, to approve agenda number one zero one dash PUD dash zero two dash thirteen, which reads to approve the Planning Commission's recommendation and recommend the City Attorney to prepare a, a PUD contract. With that, I'll ask a question. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Thank you. At this time, we'll move to number two presentation Better Buildings for Michigan Program by Program Manager Mary Templeton. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Commissioners. Thank you, all of you in attendance, for having us here. Um, Dave, is there anything I need to do to get this to start? You have got it. Great. Um, I am here today. Uh, the City of Marquette has been a very, very strong partner in the Better Buildings for Michigan program over the last two and a half years. The program is wrapping up. I'm here to give a quick review, a brief review of what we've done over the last three years with the support of the City of Marquette's residents, with the support of all of you, and the support of Superior Watershed Partnership, who has Natasha Kosh has led the, um, the initiative here in Marquette. Um, for those of you who don't know, many of you, I believe, have participated in the program. Is that not the case on the commission? Many of you have had your homes 
had some work done, perhaps some of you in the audience as well. For those of you who don't know, the Better Buildings for Michigan program was a statewide program that was initiated three years ago through a $30 million grant that the state of Michigan won. It was a competitive bid. It was the second highest award in the nation. The state of Michigan won that from the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, and the idea was to support residential and commercial energy efficiency programs. We had five grant goals. Um, our goal, first of all, was to communicate with residents in certain communities, 11,000 of them, and to serve 9,000. We've actually communicated with about a half a million people. We've served, we will serve by the end of this program, more than 10,000 people. And we initially intended to go into 27 communities throughout the state. On the PowerPoint there, you can see which communities we targeted. We actually went to more than 50 communities as we expanded the program throughout the state. We also had a goal to do work in commercial buildings in the city of Detroit. This commercial building work was focused in the city of Detroit. Um, we intended to do 13.5 million square feet of commercial, industrial, and public space. We actually will do 14.8 million um, square feet of commercial space in the city of Detroit. Um, we had some pretty lofty goals to avoid energy use and greenhouse gas emissions. We're still calculating what those are. Our goal overall was to save 15% energy use in all of the homes and businesses that we served. We're very clear that we're going to achieve that goal and we will report out how we do on our energy consumption metrics. Um, the other part of this was to make our money go further. So the $30 million that was given to the state of Michigan through the Department of Energy um, um, we wanted to leverage that to make every dollar be, you have private funds, five, five private dollars to match every dollar that was invested through taxpayer money. Um, so we achieved that goal and surpassed that. We will have more than $162 million throughout this state of private capital invested in this program, definitely adding to the economic impact that this program has had. The other thing was at this time, it was back in 2009, um, jobs were, were definitely one of the critical conversations. The goal was to create over 2,000 jobs and over the course of the three years we will have created more than 3,000 jobs. So great, great work. Many thanks in large, large, we could not have done this without all of our partners. The city of Marquette certainly. Um, the partners in Marquette included, like I said, Superior Watershed Partnership. HES and Michigan Energy Options were our two primary contractors that did work in people's homes. And then all of the other contractors that are on the list also were suppliers to HES and Min Michigan Energy Options. Everyone did a really, really, really nice job of engaging local resources, local, um, creating local jobs that can't be outsourced anywhere, doing work in people's homes. Um, as far as some metrics, these are preliminary numbers of some of the results in Marquette. Marquette really, really um, stood out as one of the high achieving communities in our non-entitlement community sector. So those are all of the areas that we served like Traverse City and Bath and DeWitt Township and Wyandotte. They were the areas outside of Southeast Michigan in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, more than 800 homes were served. Um, which is just absolutely fantastic. The next highest community in the non-entitlement communities, there were around 500 homes. So Marquette really, really did a nice job of, of spreading the word and getting the homeowners engaged. Um, about a quarter of a million dollars in program incentives, those are federal USDOE tax dollars going back into your community. And as a matter of fact, because Marquette did really well, um, more funds were put into Marquette as opposed to some of those other non-entitlement communities. We distributed the funds into Marquette because there were so many homeowners that participated in the program. 
You can see some of the other metrics here. We'll continue to calculate how much energy savings and we'll translate that into something that's kind of easily recognizable. And Natasha and Superior Watershed Partnership will put out some press releases after the program is completed. Um, we've also gotten really, really good press. You can see some of the um, case studies that we have up here. You might recognize some of the residents here, some of the work that was done. Um, it talks about some of the work that was done, so perhaps at a break or after the meeting, you can take a look at these. Um, this house over on the right-hand side not only did energy efficiency improvements, but also installed solar panels on the home, really, really contributing to the success of this program. Um, the program will wrap up in the next couple of months. All of the work will be done in um, homes by the middle of June. Uh, we'll be compiling all of the statistics. Natasha and the team will be releasing the press releases talking about what kind of greenhouse gas emissions, what other types of results um, you all have achieved. Um, we also are looking towards part of this program was to create a market that would continue to exist after the program was done. We feel like we've done a really good job with that. We have, I work for a company called Michigan Saves, which is a nonprofit organization that finances um, energy efficiency work, and that organization will continue to exist after this grant. Of course, um, Superior Watershed Partnership is looking for opportunities to continue the work and to continue to expand the energy efficiency work into other people's homes as well. Um, we have a number of contractors that have 800 more homes that they've served, so 800 more homes of experience that they've had, and they've expanded their offerings within the city of Marquette as well. Um, that's true all over the state. So we feel like we've done a really, really good job, and we could not have done it with all, all of your support. So I'm here to thank you today. Um, Mayor and City Commissioners for everything that you've done to help make this program a success and residents and any of the, the folks that, um, that, that your neighbors with, please extend my con congratulations and thanks as well for making this program a huge success. You remain there for a second. I'll Certainly. ask my fellow commissioners if they have any questions. Commissioners, any questions at this time? Seeing none, thank you. Thank Very you. Very much, great presentation. With that, we'll move to number three presentation, Upper Peninsula Rolling Club by Vice President Sally Davis. Actually, you get to hear from two of us. Doesn't mean it'll take twice as long, I assure you. Okay, my name is Kelly Drake Woodward. I'm the president of the Upper Peninsula Community Rowing Club, and this is Sally Davis. She's our past president and also our current vice president. Um, many of you have seen us at various planning sessions for the city for a uh, recreation plan. Uh, we, were, we attended your session on the ORDOC uh, planning. We've been to the Harbor Advisory Committee. Anyway, we've been uh, talking to people about our desire to have a community boathouse. Um, that's not what we're here to talk to you about tonight. Um, we're here basically to talk to you about our annual lease uh, on the beach where we keep our rowing shells um, and our safety launch. We're also here to talk to you about a new proposal for the space that you know as I, I think a, a retail space there at the um, Overlook, which we think of as a clubhouse. So we did want to um, maybe let you know a little bit about who we are and what we do, just to remind you as you consider these proposals. We have been a part of Marquette's uh, Lower Harbor since 2004. We are a 501c3 organization with a 12 member board of directors. We have almost 100 members now. We are entirely volunteer um, organization. We do run a high school program for youth and we provide scholarships for, for those kids to learn the sport of rowing, which we think will help them hopefully adopt a lifetime fitness opportunity. These are our two general missions. Um, we, we love the sport of rowing. We want to promote it to as many people as we can, and we do that providing education, uh, safety, and an encouraging environment through our team. 
We also positively, positively engage youth, and then they're not just from Marquette, they're from areas all around here. They get to come participate in the summer activity where they meet other kids from the area, they learn to work together, and hopefully come to love this sport as, as well as we do. We have had some of them go on to collegiate rowing opportunities and, and hopefully beyond. These are just some of our members. You can see that we're very multi-generational. We have men and women, um, and we row from May through October. Uh, we let members row as often as they'd like once they go through the Learn to Row program. Uh, there's 15 opportunities at least every week, morning and evening times. We have nine U.S. Certi uh, US rowing certified coaches at this point, and these people have invested their own money and time uh, to get that training. Uh, we do go through an annual safety training program with the Coast Guard just to make sure that all our members are aware of how important safety is on Lake Superior. Our rowing fleet right now uh, consists of two eight-seat rowing shells that are about 60 feet long, two four-seat shells, 45 feet long, and some other miscellaneous uh, boats. We have one safety launch right now. We're working on getting another one because our program has been growing. And uh, we do work in partnership with the NMU crew. Um, we both need space near the water, and so we work together to move our boats and, and promote rowing. These are our programs. Um, since 2004, we've had our annual Learn to Row classes for adults. We also added a youth program in 2006. And just a little bit more about our youth. We're pretty proud of them. We've become increasingly more committed to community as time went on. We started by hosting a regatta, which was attended by NMU and some other, and Michigan Tech, our, our youth, and, and us other people who love to row. Uh, these are the other things we've added. Uh, we do an annual spring cleanup um, Lakeshore Drive. We have a little Adopt-A-Park thing going on right now for one of the um, flower pots down there where we row. Uh, we do clean the beach up regularly down um, at our area where we lease. We've helped other community clubs with their fundraising efforts, um, attended health fairs, and I think I already mentioned our scholarship program. Some of our challenges that bring us here to, to cooperate and try to collaborate with you is that we do have to be close to the water because our boats are uh, 250 pounds or more. Uh, so we can't carry them for long distances. And the most important thing is that we, our, our gunnels of our boats are very, very low in the water. And so we have to be in protected water. So we can't have, uh, we have to be there in the lower harbor area. And then one of our other concerns as time has gone on is that our rowing shells are out on the beach where pretty much anybody could get to them and, and other weather impacts. So that was what brought our concern for the boathouse. And uh, Sally is going to talk to you about our future in Marquette and some of the proposal points here. Really? <laughs> um. Actually, I wanted to just talk to you about the two issues that you have before you on your agenda that were um, put on the consent agenda. The first one being the rental of our, our space at Founders Landing for storage of our rowing shells during the summer months. And that is a um, kind of a ongoing contract that we've had for the last several years, ever since uh, the Coast Guard built their new building and kicked us out of that space. We've been down at Founders Landing with um, storage of our boats during the summertime and then we carry them from there and we launch right from there. And the Lower Harbor area provides us nice protected water. It's not like um, it, it, the, other, the water to the north of that, closer to Presque Isle, is a little more difficult to row in. So we, you know, it's kind of like we need to be in, in some really good protected water, and that's the Lower Harbor provides that for us. Um, Kelly mentioned, so this is kind of the, the first proposal for storage of our boats on the beaches is one that we've had for the last several years. Kelly mentioned that we row from May through the end of October, and there is a small issue with that particular um, lease at the moment because it 
is supposed to start May 1st. And the fact that you can't act on it tonight presents us with a little bit of a problem, not too much because the weather hasn't been cooperating, but we're real anxious to get out there and, and start our rowing season. Um, we'd, in fact, like to put our boats there before your next commission meeting when it might be when you um, approve the lease. So if there's anything that could be done to allow us to put our boats down um, at the lower harbor within the next couple weeks, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, the second proposal that you have before us is a new one, and that is to rent the space underneath the observation deck at Founders Landing. And we recognize that this space has been unused since it was um, developed or built. And uh, we have been, the city has been very nice to us and allow us to um, plug in our coxswain equipment there so it's always charged up the last couple of years. But with our growing membership, we've realized the um, how nice it would be to have a more permanent or more of a presence on the beach for a clubhouse. And so we would love to take this unused space, provide the city with a little bit of revenue and rent that space. And the kinds of, this does not replace our boathouse because we can't fit those boats within that small space at 384 square feet. But it, what it can do for us is provide us uh, a place to provide safety training, to train new Cox people and and to train new safety launch drivers and a place to do some dry land training when the weather doesn't cooperate. Um, so those are the kinds of things we'd like to do in this clubhouse. Um, we would also ob obviously run our club meetings there uh, and, and just have that little bit more of a presence on the beach. So we hope that um, you realize how much this, this kind of fits into the strategic planning that has gone on with the city previously and we would still like to be part of that beachfront area and even a little bit more so than we have in the past. Uh, Kelly mentioned that we have well as 97 paid memberships during, during last summer and our Learn to Row that we run every um, early summer has been running around 40 to 50 people so we could potentially have, you know, some people drop out, but, you know, 120, 130 people who are members this year. And we feel that a clubhouse could um, benefit the whole club. Thank you. And we're here if you have questions. Thank you very much, girls. Uh, now I'll open this up for my fellow commissioners. Commissioner Coyne. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I would like to ask the city manager, uh, given the problem with uh, the timing, uh, if we could extend the year lease that we have with them for 2012-2013 for one for 30 days, because we can't, they can't be there until the 28th, assuming we pass it, and I don't think that's going to be an issue. But is that a p uh, perhaps I should ask the city attorney if we could do that? I think rather than extending the lease, which would probably require another legal document, I think the city administrator can simply administratively ex uh, do a temporary permit until we can get this on next week's or next uh, meeting's agenda. Do you have any suggestions how we could uh, coerce him to doing that? Uh, <laughs> just maybe ask him, I think Mr. If you Mr. Manager, him, would you be willing <laughs> to do that? <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. It'd be my pleasure. Okay. Um, the other point is. Um, I, I'm a little, I'm being a little sarcastic here, but uh, I'm really happy that that $500,000 box with a viewing thing on it is finally coming to some use. Uh, <laughs> rather, uh, it was, I won't go further than that, but uh, I think the, the value of that um, renting that will provide you with a community and when the yacht club was formed they have this little still have this little teeny thing but there were like 10 people on it and now there's hundreds of people that belong to it and i really think this will be an implement you know an impetus for you growing and and be, and getting where you want to eventually so i would hope that we would pass that next meeting thank you thank you commissioner coin commissioner ryan just to say that I support Commissioner Coyne's suggestion to the manager, and, and I'm, I think he's already agreed to do it. But, and, and secondly, to, you know, I, I think there's strong support for, for both of the uh, requests you have before us, so it's probably just a matter of making it happen two weeks from now. But I, I'm really glad to see 
something water related happening by the waterfront and it couldn't happen <laughs> to a better group so it's great thank you commissioner ryan commissioner stone else only just to say how much pleasure you guys give me in the morning <laughs> when I can sit on the shore with a cup of coffee, not have to do anything, and watch you guys out there on the water working so hard. So uh, uh, certainly I wish you the, the best of luck. I think the use of that, that small shell beneath the, the lookout is terrific, and certainly will only add not only to the overall ambience and value of the city waterfront experience, but certainly to your own recruiting. So thank you for doing it. Thank you, Commissioner Stonehouse. Commissioner Nemi. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a comment, I, I was structuring your comments, how how you're, you're recounting the many meetings that you've been to, and I recall that, but <laughs> when I think of the rowing club, I think like Commissioner Stonehouse, I, I think of the skulls going going back and forth in, in the lower harbor, and I think that's really neat. I think it's something we, we need to support and, and uh, make sure that it continues. Thank you, Commissioner Namey. Any other commissioner? Commissioner Kambanzi? <coughs> I just want to throw in my support for the project, and certainly, as we look at a long-term waterfront plan, I do hope that you're right there at every meeting, um, giving us your input too, because I think this is something that is sustainable, it's certainly volunteer-led, and something all of us can take quite a bit of pride in. So thank you for your efforts. I just wanted to say um, I anticipate that as we're gathering around that clubhouse area there will be a lot of people going by on the bike, bike path and we're pretty good ambassadors as we are but but now we'll be more accessible so I think it, I, I appreciate your support and I would just echo that I've been very impressed with how supportive the City Commission has been um, to us as we have built this club and I'm thrilled that you think of us as just being out on the water going back and forth rather than sitting in meetings that makes me feel really good <laughs> uh, commissioners anything further uh, seeing none I w also would like to give your group uh, kudos for being out there I think that's pretty awesome and like you say that has been a growing uh, sport so you'll probably be back looking for a bigger spot yeah, <laughs> in the near future but anyways keep up the good work okay. your your thank clubs you. do an excellent job thank you very much at this time we'll move to reappointment uh, city clerk yes your honor we have one this evening it's uh, for William Larsh traffic parking advisory committee for a term ending 05-30-16 thank you city clerk uh, commissioners commissioner ryan i move we reappoint william larsh to the traffic parking advisory committee for a term ending may 30th 2016. thank you commissioner ryan second commissioner coin Commissioner Ryan, anything further? No, just glad to have Mr. Larch step forward for a reappointment. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Coyne? I agree. Thank you. Any other commissioner at this time? I also thank William Larch for sticking around for another three years on this uh, traffic and parking advisory committee ending in 5 30 16. Thank you very much, Mr. Marsh. I'll now ask the question. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. At this time, I'll open this uh, portion to public comment. Comments may not exceed three minutes per person. Citizens may reserve time to speak on agenda items. This may result in the item being moved up on the uh, agenda uh, at the mayor's discretion. Anybody wishing to address the city commission at this time, please state your name and physical address, please. Colleen Roberts, 903 Adams Street. And I respectfully um, would like to reserve my comment time until after the city manager makes his presentation on the senior center. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Good evening. My name is Diane Dufay. I live at 410 Rock Street in Marquette. I was born and raised in Marquette, and I'm now classified as a baby boomer senior. And I'm here to represent the senior exercise class at the Spring Street uh, Senior Center. We meet three mornings a week. We do exercises. 
We also have some of our ladies that utilize the wood floor gym upstairs to do their walking before exercising. And we're, I'm just here to support, you know, the renovation of our senior center. I've gone to some of your um, meetings and uh, most of us don't want to relocate to the Lakeview Arena. I've been out there with your wee bowling and we're in competition with skaters and the floor has been wet and the parking really isn't any better than what we have now. Um, I've never had any problem finding a parking spot on Spring Street and the senior center, uh, are, we have two large rooms with kitchens which accommodates if we want to have a party or, you know, we have another large room. Yes, the senior center has been grossly neglected. It hasn't been updated in a long time. I mean, a little bit of paint, cleaning the floor, maybe adding a couple um, lazy boy chairs or something to make it a little bit more homey. We love our senior center. Um, now I see where you're actually considering a new facility. That was kind of in the background. Um, my only suggestion if you go with that is to have it maybe centrally located. We have ladies that walk from the senior high rise with walkers, with canes. When the weather permits, they come to the senior center and they exercise. Our group consists of ladies from 62 to 90. And you know, I just wanted to express to you that we love our senior center and it, we, we don't want to have to move, but if you want, you know, we can tell you some suggestions on how to make it better. It doesn't take much to add bright paint, you know, a little bit of maybe have a, a screen, wide screen television where we could wee bowl down there. You could do more with that area because it is, there is a lot of room down there. But um, I just wanted to represent, I have a big representation from our seniors and we all agree that we really do not want to go to the arena. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to? No applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. These are my opinions. April 29th, under the proclamation for Municipal Clerks Week, impartiality was mentioned as an integral aspect of the job. While this attribute applies well to Mr. Blue, we must never forget who preceded him. If impartiality is essential to the task, then how was a biased official on our public record or public payroll for decades? Yeah. He's on tape telling the Planning Commission that they had to vote to approve two 12-story towers at Lakeshore site and he's alleged to have purposely falsified the official meeting minutes, examples on request. Do you call that impartial? Too many proclamations are mere formalities, such as Arbor Day, and on tonight's agenda, Founders Landing and Waterfront Safety Awareness. There aren't enough weeks in the year to cover every occupation and every cause. When is Citizens Activist Week? You recognize Arbor Day, yet you treat naturally growing trees like obstacles. Then one of the most disgraced officials in Marquette history plays a leading role for Founders Day. And this board is a waterfront safety, life and death nightmare. Mr. Ryan continues to make a disproportionate percentage of the motions. This isn't to fault him so much as the other five eligible motion makers. You're all paid to participate equally instead of relying on Mr. Ryan to facilitate your involvement. Or perhaps Mr. Ryan rushes his motions to keep the ball rolling, or maybe he just likes to steal the show. Regardless, this is unhealthy for any board, and you've shown no effort to better balance the motions since your last reminder. To watch the two most exploitive members dominate this board is disappointing, and with Mr. Schneider leaving, the odds fall further to the public disfavor, especially with Hartwood on the horizon. This ought to greatly concern our youth, who must live the longest with the consequences of your decision, such as your roundabout and the new eyesore that juts in the Shiras Park, because 12 years of advance warning wasn't enough for you. April 29th, another citizen stated that the students had seen democracy at work. It's hardly democracy when the public isn't allowed to make a difference. What the students really observed was a diverse exchange of information. The larger lesson for them is not to automatically take anyone's word. Research the data with an open mind. They're advised to observe the terrain while driving, walking, and cycling about town to reach their own conclusions. Don't assume by who says what 
but by what is said. Be aware that evil lurks across the entire nation. Parties endeavor to steal long-term opportunity from many to fulfill the short-sighted, greedy goals of few. They'll lie through their teeth, like a company that recently extended the life of its mind by a year. Five years ago, it was said that more product lay underground than they originally reported, in fact, allegedly much more than another year's worth, hence the big push for County Road 595. You and those with differing viewpoints are asked to address the specifics, so we may then delve into those matters in even greater detail. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? I'm Dan Landers at 2808 Granite Point Drive, Marquette. I'd just like to reserve some time to speak on uh, item number 11 if needed. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Seeing none, I'll close this portion of public comment. We move to number 10, consent agenda, uh, city clerk. Yes, Your Honor. Item A, approve the minutes of the May 7, uh, 2013 special commission meeting. Item B, approve the total bill, bills payable in the amount of $188,396.74. Item C, schedule a public hearing for May 28, 2013 to confirm single lot special assessment roll number 579. Item D, approve an expenditure not to exceed $1,800 for the inclusion of the new city charter on the MCC website and authorize the city manager, manager or his designee <coughs> to sign the letter of agreement with MCC. Item E, schedule a public hearing for May 28, 2013 to consider approval of a new microbrewery license application from Black Rock Brewery, LLC. Item F, consider a lease agreement between the city and the UPRC for the uh, period May 1, 2013 through November 1st, 2013 and carry this item forward to the May 28, 2013 City Commission meeting for final approval. Item G, consider the proposal from the UPRC for leasing vacant retail space at the observation deck of Founders Landing at 655 South Lakeshore Boulevard for the purpose of establishing a clubhouse and carry... <coughs> okay. Um, consider a item G, uh, consider a, uh, a the proposal from the UPRC for leasing vacant retail space at the observation deck for Founders Landing at 655 South Lakeshore Boulevard for the purpose of establishing a clubhouse and carry this item forward to the May 28, 2013 City Commission meeting for final approval. Item H, consider <coughs> the Hiawatha Trails request to, re to renew a trail permit in section 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35 of the Hartwood Forest Land property for the purposes of developing and maintaining a snowmobile trail and carry this item forward to the May 28, 2013 City Commission meeting for final approval. Item I, consider a lease agreement uh, between the City and Van Gogh's Incorporated to operate the concession stands at Matson Park and Presque Isle Park and carry this item forward to the May 28, 2013 uh, City Commission meeting for final approval. And uh, Item, let's see, this would be item uh, I. J, I, I, uh, that was I, I'm sorry, this would be J, uh, consider uh, bids for sanitary sewer, sanitary sewer cleaning and televising. Okay, and then item K would be, there are the next uh, five items are proclamations recognizing events in the city of Marquette over the, in the next few days. Um, and be item K, Founders Day, May 18th, 2013. Item L, uh, Public Works Recognition Week, May 19th through the 25th, 2013. Uh, item M, EM, Emerger, Emergency Services Week, uh, May 19th through the 25th, 2013. Item N, Waterfront Safety Week, May 20th through the 24th, uh, 2013. And uh, item O, uh, Arbor Day being recognized on May 24th, 2013. Thank you, City Clerk. Commissioners, uh, motion is in order to approve the consent agenda with the exception of reimbursement to Commissioners Stonehouse, Convency, and 
DiPietro. All present will vote on this motion. Commissioner okay. Neamey. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we approve the consent agenda with the exception of reimbursements to Commissioner Stonehouse Comenzi and Your Honor, the, the Mayor, Mr. Petro. Thank you. Com uh, motion by Commissioner Neamey, second by Commissioner Coyne. Commissioner Neamey. Nothing further, Your Honor. Commissioner Coyne. Nothing. Any other commissioner at this time? Seeing none, I'll ask the question. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Uh, motion passes four to three. Uh, I'm sorry, the motion passes four to zero, four to zero with uh, uh, Commissioner. Seven to zero. Seven to zero, no. yes. Next one will be four. Seven to zero. And with Commissioner Convency? No. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Neamey. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that we approve the reimbursements to for travel to the Michigan Municipal League Capital Conference uh, on April 9th through the 10th and 10th uh, for Commissioner Stonehouse, check number 55443 in the amount of $11.25. Commissioner Combenzi, check number 55349 for $21.25. And Mayor DiPietro, check number 55362 for the amount of eight dollars. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Coyne? Commissioner Neamey, anything further? Nothing further, Your Commissioner Honor. Commissioner Coyne. Any other commissioner? It's a All lot of rigmarole for yeah. thirty bucks, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say yes. 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 Both yes. motion passes yeah. four to zero. No, we, we have four abstentions. Or three abstentions. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. present that now. Okay. With the record showing that Commissioner Stonehouse, Convenzi, and DiPietro abstaining. That sound good, City Clerk? Yes, Your Honor, it's perfect. Thank you. And with that, we'll move to number 11, uh, uh, report and recommendation from City Manager to review and consider adopting the sign ordinance amendments recommended by the Planning Commission, City Clerk. Yes, Your Honor. Background. The Planning Commission has been working on amendments to the City Sign Ordinance during the past several months as directed by the City Commission. Six separate draft ordinance amendments were created. These amendments are intended to, one, establish new methodologies for calculating total sign allowances for shopping centers. Two, provide for definitions that fill gaps in the existing ordinance and bring the sign ordinance up to date with new sign uh, technologies and styles, and three, address other deficiencies in the ordinance that either require code enforcement attention or, or needed uh, due to changes in sign styles and technologies or were ob observed to be relatively simple issues to resolve. On March 5, 2013, the Planning Commission held a hearing regarding the sign ordinance amendments. Changes were made to three of the draft amendments in order to address concerns brought forward in public comments. The Planning Commission unanimously passed all motions recommending that the City Commission adopt the six amendments. At its, April <coughs> at, at its meeting on April 8, 2013, the City Commission held a public hearing on these City Sign Ordinance Amendments and postponed action until this evening. During the time of the postponement, the City Commission met with the Planning Commission to review the ne necessity and pot potential efficacy of the amendments. A complete record of the Planning Commission meeting minutes regarding the amendments, including six, six work sessions and a public hearing, have been compiled and are attached. Fiscal effect none. Recommendation. Review and consider adopting the sign ordinance amend amendments recommended by the Planning Commission, alternatives as determined by the Commission. Thank you, City Clerk. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Commissioner you had, Ryan. You had a public comment? Commissioner, that's right, public comment. Mr. Landers. And I'll be... Actually, I'm really in, in favor of the uh, work that has been uh, brought together on this. Uh, and hearing what uh, uh, the Planning Commission has done on this, I think it is uh, is a good move. And as a, a sign business, I think it will help us you know, in the community. So I'm in favor of it. Thank you, sir. 
Commissioner Ryan. I'd like to move that we adopt the sign ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission with the exception of the section dealing with political signs and on the advice of an attorney that we send that back to the Commission for further consideration. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Coyne? Thank you. Commissioner uh, Ryan, anything further? You know, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of discussion in the community about signs, and uh, I think it's important to uh, point out that the uh, Planning Commission here is really dealing with some very basic issues. Number one, we're not dealing with the EMCs, the electronic message centers, which have created uh, a lot of interest, both pro and con, and that, that is not included. That will be deli uh, deliberated separately by the Planning Commission. Um, this is also directed more toward the, uh, not to the, uh, what we would call the downtown, the, the central business district. It's, uh, it's uh, more applicable to uh, what are described in the code as shopping centers and, and kind of the general business district. So um, these, these ordinances really uh, provide the proper tools in place for the city to administer a reasonable sign ordinance. And those other issues will be dealt with separately as we go forward. And so those uh, citizens who are concerned about uh, some of those issues, uh, you know, certainly we're listening, but those are not issues that are on the table tonight. Thank you. And, and I should add that the, uh, the section on political signs, uh, we've asked the city attorney to take a look at that. It did raise some questions, and based on his recommendation, um, my motion was to send that back to the Planning Commission for them to look at it as well. Political signs get into free speech issues, and so we have to be very careful about that. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner Coyne? Um, well, I echo Commissioner Ryan's comments. Uh, I want to make it clear that we, are, we have removed the amendment regarding electronic signs. That's not being voted on tonight. That's been sent back to the Planning Commission for further study. Uh, we had a very excellent discussion about that. Uh, very good education about uh, perhaps the future of electronic signs, both from uh, people who sell them and from uh, our uh, 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 city manager. And I wonder if I could just ask you uh, to comment on uh, the future rather than just everybody, you know, getting all upset about electronic signs, about the future, what's going to maybe happen with that. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, uh, I think it's safe to say the commission has demonstrated and of course staff in supporting the commission is absolutely supportive of the community process that will go into that dialogue. And so uh, as we look at the world moving forward, we don't anticipate that uh, the way that we'll come to whatever decision that we'll make about signage will be any different than the one that we've used for these amendments. But we're mindful of the balance and the passion that people have for the, the um, quality of life that we enjoy here in Marquette. There are many, many people who enjoy driving through downtown and the nostalgia that many of those beautiful old sandstone buildings and, and the historic effort uh, efforts that have been made to preserve those have really reaped in terms of the benefits that we all enjoy as residents of Marquette. But equally so, it's very difficult to get out in front of uh, technology changes. And you can imagine if you're if you're looking at uh, any one of these issues, it's sometimes a lot easier to think of it on the edges. And if we say right now we're going to prohibit technology from moving forward forever, uh, we we could very well find ourselves looking like Fayette uh, or looking like some of these other communities that just choose to freeze themselves in time. And equally so, if we just let everybody do whatever they want and all of these new technologies come along, uh, we could very quickly obscure all the things that we love about Marquette. So we know we don't want to necessarily do either one of those things. We know that we want to find the right balance, and we know that we're going to have to accommodate some of these technologies as they move forward. And so what's really more important, and what we're hoping that the public takes away from all of this, particularly as this dialogue really goes on, not just with the city commissioner, the planning commission, but with the DDA and with many of the private organizations that provide support to the city, that you really sit back and think about what particularly you would like to see preserved and what particularly you'd be willing to uh, uh, maybe see some compromise with. 
I've heard many residents of the community speak to uh, the fact that uh, technology is changing so quickly it's really hard to see uh, what might be around the next corner. Uh, and we know if uh, certainly in Marquette in the last three years you've seen a lot more people using cell phones, a lot more people using mobile applications, uh, a lot more people now being able to afford large screen TVs, large displays, getting engaged in a lot, a lot of different uh, commercial and recreational things in our community that require technology to really enable it. And so we're hoping as we move forward that uh, the community can really clearly and crisply help us decide just what level of technology we're going to be willing to accept and exactly how we'd like to see that integrated in in a way that doesn't sacrifice any of the things that people love about Marquette. And when you think about it, this isn't the first time that challenge has been faced. At, at some point, somebody decided they wanted to put up that beautiful old marquee uh, over the Delft Theater. Uh, certainly, that was a big flashing sign in its day. There was one right across the street uh, at the Nordic Theater. Uh, and so uh, we know they've had to grapple with this before. Uh, we know the community's had to look at this before. There's no reason, Your Honor, why I don't believe that we should be able to find the same kind of balance moving forward. Uh, but we hope to do it as in public and inclusive a way as possible. Thank well, you, City Manager. Uh, Commissioner Coyne, you still well, have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, I, I just have to say, I don't think anybody appreciates until you see the sign ordinance how much work the Planning Commission put into this. Incredible. And they're meticulous and they're fair. And I think they will be meticulous and fair working out the electronic uh, message and thing. And I, I'm a little distressed. I've heard some people say that I was uh, absolutely against these uh, my question at that meeting was are there people is there a group of people who are adamantly against this and opposing we need to know that if that's the case that was not a statement on my part saying I am absolutely against these uh, I am impressed how much I've learned from the Planning Commission and uh, I think I trust that they will come with a good amendment and I appreciate that w one in which uh, will take everyone's consideration into uh, account. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Coyne. Other commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Kimbensi? If I could, I'd like to thank my co commissioners sitting here with me as well as the city manager for their comments, but I'd also like, for the record, if we could have the city attorney just explain the three things that we took out of uh, the sign ordinance amendment um, dealing with political science. I think it's important for the community to hear what we've taken out and why. And I think our city attorney did a great job researching this and certainly helping us come to this conclusion. Thank you, Commissioner Kambansi. Our city attorney is more than happy to address that. <laughs> Actually, the sign, uh, political campaign sign, uh, part of the ordinance was consisted of two sentences, and we added one. And that's what we're not going to, what's before the commission not to pass in today is that one sentence that we added in because I think it doesn't solve our problem. Had to do with uh, um, the square f uh, footage of signs and how much signage you can have in a private piece of property. And we need to address that a little bit more carefully. But we're not taking out what we already have. We're just not adding the sentence that was recommended for the reasons I put in my memo to you. Um, did you need anything more than that? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address? Commissioner <coughs> Schneider. Well, I mentioned it the last time we had discussed. I also mentioned it during the work session. I, I don't really want to support this, um, but I will because by not supporting it, I'm supporting the language that we had previously, which I don't think fits the bill. But by supporting this, um, I'm supporting 26 pages of a sign ordinance, and I brought it up, and I, I know the commission is probably tired of hearing it, um, but I'm really frustrated with the legalistic direction that we're going, I will say, as a whole society, and since I'm in a voting position, I want to be able to support the idea that we can minimize our rules and regulations. I think that the ordinance itself is written really well. I, I really thank our um, our staff and our planning commission for putting something together that that I think fits the bill. Um, unfortunately, it's not a bill that I would like to see supported. 
So as I said, I, I will definitely support it because I think it's a huge step forward from where we were. But, um, you know, I don't know how much more definitions and regulations are actually going to do us any good. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Schneider. Anyone else wishing to address this agenda? Seeing uh, Commissioner Stonehouse. Um, I'll certainly support the uh, support the motion, and I uh, would ask for Barons, perhaps, if it's possible, to make a motion following this vote that would relate to this item. Is that a point of parliamentary procedure we can follow? Or once this item is discussed or voted on, is that the end of it? That's generally the practice is once this motion passes, we'd move to the next agenda item. Uh, you could do this as an amendment, I guess, if you can get support for it. Uh, it unless can only it's a be completely, done, it yeah, can only, it can only be, be done, done as, as an amendment. amendment. It cannot right. be done as a freestanding motion. Right. Well, I would ask the motion maker then whether he would be willing to accept an amendment, a friendly amendment. That's right. Well, my amendment would be uh, I would motion to prohibit electronic messaging center signs in the DDA area as well as Lakeshore Boulevard from Front Street to Presque Isle. I think we've danced around this for a long time. I think the Planning Commission has danced around it. And I think it's time that we address the issue head on. And if at such time the Planning Commission desires to come forward with an actual amendment addressing electronic messaging signs, certainly I think whatever commission is sitting then would be willing to look at that amendment and make decisions based on it. But in the meantime, I think we need, we should, as a commission, send a very strong message as to how we desire to preserve and protect our historic downtown. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse, is there a second? That's one more time. Is there a second? Commissioner Nemi. Yeah, I'll, I'll support the motion. Okay. You're supporting uh, the, the amendment the to my motion? The amendment, yes. Hmm. Under discussion is the amendment. Commissioner Ryan. Well, as the original motion maker, I, I don't agree with Commissioner Stonehouse. You know, I'd, we had a good meeting with the Planning Commission. We sat down and talked. They said they were going to study this issue and come back. I think for us to preempt them is, is really out of line. And, and I, you know, I feel strongly, too. I, you know, I could have said the same thing. I don't want to see flashing signs in our historic districts. I'm very much against that. But I'd like to see the process go forward and let people do their job. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner uh, Coyne. Um, I agree. <coughs> I think it is circumventing the process which we just praised as to how extensive and how fair and how much input they got. And that's their responsibility to do, to make recommendations to us such as this, this amendment. And I think the uh, amendment is appropriate to have people on the Planning Commission understand that Commissioner Stonehouse made that motion and that's his right. Uh, I'm not going to support the motion and uh, maybe Commissioner Nimi made the motion, maybe will support the motion or not, I don't know. But I really think it should go back to the Planning Commission where a whole group of people and everyone involved can deal with the problem. That's why we did uh, removed it in the first place so they could do that. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse? The reason I made the motion, other than obviously feeling strongly about it, was because I have read no piece of paper from the Planning Commission at all that discussed electronic messaging center signs that gave me any indication that they were not in favor of them. And when in reading that documentation and trying to parse between the lines of their meetings, I felt and do feel that we'll, what will come forward will not meet what I believe the community standards are. And uh, I, I felt and feel it is very important for them to get the message strongly that the community feels that electronic messaging center signs in the downtown area simply are not appropriate, period. And if the, the Planning Commission chooses to come forward with an amendment that contracts that, expands that, changes that, I think that's great. And finally it may come forward. But remember, we're getting this stuff piecemeal. 
we're not getting it as a whole package as you might suggest that we should. And I think that makes it more difficult to deal with. But certainly, you know, this is the process, and if the amendment is not accepted, it's not accepted, and, and I thank you for uh, your consideration of it. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Stonehouse. City Attorney? Uh, Commissioner Nemi seconded the motion. He has a right to speak on it. Uh, Commissioner Nemi? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm not optimistic the motion is going to pass the, the amendment, but I felt that I, I supported it because I think it's, it's good to get the, the amendment on the table, get some discussion regarding it. Um, I, I too have trepidations about I, I don't want to pull the rug out of the Planning Commission. They, they do an important task for us in, in vetting these issues and bringing considered recommendations for our consideration. Um, I think the, the, the way I view this, I, you know, I've gotten a, a lot of emails for and against electronic signs or electronic messaging centers, whatever we want to call it. I guess I, I lean toward the, the, the keeping our historic is, district as pure as we can. We, we certainly have some electronic signs there now, which will be nonconforming. I guess when, when we do come to, to actually regulating these, I would be more in favor of more regulation at this point because if we make a mistake or if there's something wrong with that, we can move to less regulation in the future. If we have less regulation at the onset, we will be uh, encouraging many signs to come in, which further regulation in the future, if we're wrong, will result in a lot of non-conforming uses. So I think we can err by being a little more regulatory at the, at the outset than uh, at, at the uh, at the, the second hour, so. But as I said, I'm I'm not going to hold my breath and think we're going to be successful on this motion. But I think I think it serves a purpose for us to 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 air some opinions regarding the, the issue. Thank you, Commissioner Nemi. Commissioner uh, Schneider. Well, just to throw my two cents in for the discussion's sake, um, I completely agree with the sentiments of of Commissioner Stonehouse that that this isn't something that I want to see downtown and it's not something I want to see around Lakeshore. Uh, I would actually extend that to most of the city. Um, that said, though, I can't support the amendment just because I would prefer to shoot it down once it comes through the Planning Commission to go through the proper process still. Um, you know, I think they've done a really good job with this and even though I feel very strongly in, in a similar light, I'd still rather go through the entire process than, than knock it down here. Thank you, Commissioner Schneider. Commissioner Kimbansi? Well, I definitely am opposed to the electronic messaging centers in those areas that Commissioner Stonehouse listed. And I'm wondering if, one, we as a commission can't find a way to collect more data. I know all of us have gotten bombarded with emails saying I'm in favor, I'm opposed. Personally, I think most of what I have gotten has been opposed to it. But I do agree that 50 years from now, we might not know what's coming our way. We might not know what might fit in, what might be aesthetically pleasing. I'm wondering, like we did with the city charter, can we put a provision that every so many years this is looked at as technology advances, as, as we look at things a little differently? I definitely agree with Commissioner Stonehouse. Right now, I'm not in favor of those in any of the areas that he listed. But I'm wondering, one, if we could collect some more data from the community. Two, if we could put some sort of a, a sunset on this where in five years we have to look at it again. I guess I'm, I'm curious to see what anyone else thinks of that idea. Commissioner uh, Schneider? I like that idea. I like the idea of, of having um, not necessarily a sunset, but some sort of mandatory revision, particularly because the electronic messaging centers that, that I agree with Commissioner Stonehouse on that I'm not a fan of have to do with the amount of light, the type of light, you know, how it affects things. But if technology changes in five years to where an electronic messaging center looks no different than those poster boards over there and isn't flashy, isn't bright, is something very simple, you know, I still want us to be able to be, um, I guess, to force the the hand of our planning commissioner city commission five ten years down the road to at least look at it and see if it's if it's fair and reasonable so i just want to offer support for that concept thank you commissioner coin 
Um, I agree. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, I'd like to ask a parliamentary question of the attorney. Ron? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, can the person who made the motion to amend or the second vote against the motion or Yes, the person who makes the motion cannot speak against it, his own motion, but he can vote against it. Okay. Okay, I just and wanted to. And the person who seconds can speak against it as well as vote against okay, it. Okay, I wanted to make that clear so if they ever were to think of changing their mind, they could vote no on this motion <laughs> rather than feeling like locked in. Yes, that is okay. correct. Thank you. Commissioner Ryan? I, I, just like, I just like to remind the commissioners we started out trying to pass something which was presented to us by the Planning Commission. And it specifically did not address all of these issues that all of you are raising at this point. For a reason, that's what they're going to do. You know, that's the whole idea. They're going to look at these issues and come back to us with some of the information you're saying we should be getting. So, you know, I think we ought to stick to, stick to our knitting and, and move on here and uh, adopt, the, uh, adopt the resolution that's been presented, which is to approve the sign ordinance that has been presented to us and to wait for the uh, Planning Commission to come back with further recommendations on, on sign ordinances in the downtown and electronic message centers. You know, since we're all giving speeches, I'm opposed to signs downtown too. But that's not the issue here. The issue is, are we in favor of this motion? So. Thank you. Can my you motion. <laughs> Any other commissioner at this uh, city attorney? No, I have nothing. Okay. Well, there's a motion by Commissioner Stonehouse, seconded by Commissioner Nanami, to amend the main city motion. Main motion. Did you want the city clerk to read that back, or should I just okay? All in favor, say yes. Yes. Opposed. No. 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 Looks like uh, it uh, fails five to two. Okay, we'll go back to the main motion by Commissioner Ryan and seconded by Commissioner Coyne. Okay, just looking at my records. Commissioner Coyne. I call the question. And that's fine because I think it's already been debated. Um, it's a roll call vote by practice. Right. So, any <coughs> further debate on this? Seeing none, we'll go with the roll call city clerk. Could you read back what we think that we said? <laughs> Pretty simple. We just approve the recommendation. Yeah, uh, I just want this on the record for. Right. Uh, see, the motion. Uh, to adopt the sign ordinance amendments recommended by the Planning Commission, and uh, that is it. With the, with the exception of political signs, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. you. Would you like to roll call at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Commissioner Ken Benzie? Yes. Commissioner Coyne? Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Stonehouse? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Nimi? Yes. And Mayor DiPietro? Yes. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you. And with that, we knew, uh, move to new business number 12, uh, Market Senior Center Study, City Clerk. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, background at its January 28th, 2013 meeting, the City Commission was given a report and recommendation from the Senior Task Force and UP Engineers and Architects, UPEA, regarding the long-term plan for the Market Senior Center. The plan took into account the operational service and physical facilities needs of the center. The Commission provided feedback for additional facil facility capabilities and improvements that will be incorporated into a final plan design. <clears throat> Since the presentation, the Senior Services Task Force has conducted four additional public meetings to determine desires of the senior community. 
At their April 8, 2013 meeting, the task force made the following motion for commission consideration. Following the finding of UPEA, UPEA Senior Center Plan study that included six public hearings, the task force recommends in order of priority the following considerations for improvements to our senior center. One, a new building. Two, uh, Lakeview Arena. Three, the existing facility. And the motion was carried five to two. Fiscal effect to be ter determined during the FY1415 budget discussions. Recommendation, accept the UPEA City of Market Senior Center study and recommended priority as provided by the Senior Services Task Force motion. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Thank you, City Clerk. I'll open this up for public comment at this time. Okay. Good evening, Mayor DiPietro, City Commissioners city employees and citizens of Marquette and guests of the commission. My name is Stan Begum. I'm the uh, chairman of the city's task force for the senior city Marquette senior study. Uh, first I want to say is that I want to thank the members of the task force. We spent a year and a half studying this issue. Um, and those task force members, I have one of my fellow members here, Paul Gendon. Um, I want to thank Earl Hahn, Laura Mikowski, Ciara Hall, who's here. Thank you, Ciara. Jean Priante and Jamie Michael. Um, we worked for a year and a half to study this issue. And we all took this responsibility very seriously because we feel like it's not something that we want um, as a Band-Aid. And I think um, Looking at, at the recommendations we have here, the existing location, as we felt, was much more expensive than renovating the Lakeview Arena. Um, we felt like the, the senior center, as it stands today, is farly inadequate for any expansion, any parking. Um, the, the elevator situation is, is in disrepair. The sidewalks are in disrepair. There's no parking. We felt like of all the studies that we've done, and we've had actually had six public hearings, and we've had vo low voter turnout to those hearings. And I want to thank all the people who came and voiced their opinion. And we completely understand those people who want to keep it in the same spot. The one thing that we found that about the Market Senior Center as it stands today, <coughs> it's got the best location, and that's really about it. So, you know, I'm here to answer questions, and Paul's here to answer questions, but. It, the one thing we looked at, we went back and reevaluated with the simple fact that, as I said before, we deal with three groups of seniors today. Our decisions are not based on just today. We are looking at tomorrow and the future and how technology is going to change and how those seniors that don't even realize it, that they're going to be seniors and what they're going to be needing in the future. That's why our first recommendation, with the understanding that the priority list for number one is going to have to have some additional research and location as well as financing and grant if there's any grants available we weren't we didn't have time to really research that that aspect of it but we felt that with the changing time and we weren't given a budget to look at that this is would be our number one option if we could ask for anything from the city we were asking for a gym and not something that was in disrepair. We felt like the senior citizens of Marquette deserved more. Uh, the second recommendation, oh, the Lakeview Arena, we felt is a Band-Aid again, if, if, if that is, um, I guess, an easy way or a polite way to put it, that the, the senior center moving to Lakeview Arena eliminates the, the uh, elevator situation that we have. Uh, there is more parking. It is not optimal for parking it will we will come into problems when there's big hockey tournaments or dog shows or whatever functions on the weekend but we looked at that in detail and most of the senior center functions are done by three o'clock that would on a friday afternoon um, and the the last issue that we dealt with with the senior center other than the location was the simple fact that the senior center as it stands today is in such disrepair that we felt like the cost of it to, to repair it what was, uh, would be cost prohibitive, and that's where we left it. And our recommendation uh, is based primarily on UP engineer and architect and what, what their findings 
with the current situation and the building today. And I'm here with Paul and Sierra if Sierra wants to join us for to, if you have questions we'll I'll be I'll try to answer all your questions. You know, I would just add to that quickly. I, I live on 901 Pine Street. Uh, I lived in this community uh, over 10 years now and I worked alongside the human service industry alongside the human service industry and, and in healthcare. Um, I, I fully understand the, the, the population that the senior center is currently serving and, and respect that. But what I also understand is the population that the current senior center is not serving um, across the entire city of, of Marquette. Um, you know, we, we talk about the, these Band-Aid options. We also look at the ability to grow and, and position the senior center in a place where it can serve the community um, and the future seniors that are coming down the pike in, in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. <coughs> Um, this we really looked at this in depth from a lot of different angles um, we can appreciate um, the great services that, that are being provided today um, but we also need to look at, at where we're going as a community so thank you uh, just a second before I turn it over to my fellow commissioners yes that's where I was going with that could I have that lady oh yes that one wanted to Come on up. She did too. Yeah. You My name is Jean Keegan. I'm a relatively new resident to Marquette. I attend the senior center. If the senior center is moved to Lakeview, I will not attend. It is the coldest, the most unwelcoming, the most sterile environment that I've run across. And I've been in several senior centers in Michigan. Now, I don't know what the answers are. I, I've just heard this gentleman say that uh, remodeling the existing facility may not, it may be too much to do, I don't know. Uh, updating it, the bathrooms are really bad. It's not barrier free, and you can see that's a need. The elevator, <laughs> you could eat lunch from one end of it to the other. So I don't know what the answer is, but I know the Lakeview Arena is, is not warm, welcoming, it's, not the place and I don't know what you're going to do but I like the place that they have except uh, you know I'm carrying the walker up and down steps and stuff like that so that's all I have to say and I like living in Marquette <coughs> it's a lovely place so do something <laughs> <laughs> thank you ma'am <laughs> Hi, Colleen Roberts again. And I'm one of the young seniors, okay, and I play bridge there in Mahjong, and I walk upstairs in the gym, and I have a friend who's had knee replacements who says, a wooden floor is wonderful compared to terrazzo floors for any older citizen, and it is. Now, I have read, I went through the whole thing as to why there is such disrepair in the senior center. The boiler is 40 years old. And it is the same boiler that heats this whole building, not just the senior center. I worked the elections. And for a handicapped person to come in and, and vote, they come in through the police station. They walk with their oxygen and their walkers the full aisle down, come over to where you enter the gym, and then the full length of the gym. Yes, we need an elevator there, not just for the seniors, but for any handicapped person wanting to vote, okay? So I think a lot of the things that we're talking about, we're edging in on the seniors, <coughs> but yet it is everybody in Marquette that is going to vote in precinct one or two, and there is no tender loving care there. I don't know when the last time it was painted. 
I think last year they polished the floors. But if you don't, you know, like the Better Homes thing, I had my home done with the Better Homes thing. If you don't take care of what you have, you do lose it. And do I want to vote for a millage? No. Do I want higher taxes? No. But there are a lot of things. We love our senior center right here. Parking, okay. They say a bus can't get through, but two blocks down is the new transit authority building on Spring Street. Okay, what is the difference? It is one way. If from uh, the boulevard all the way up to Front Street with Spring Spr Street one way, we probably would have better parking and buses could get through. I'm just saying there are a lot of things that we could do without money. Yes, we do need an elevator. I'm a new senior. I'd like Wi-Fi down there. But what does that cost? A router for Pete's sakes. Um, there's a lot of things that can be done that don't cost a million dollars. As for Lakeview Arena, they're expanding. Where do you think we're going to park? I think the senior high school, the community center, NCLL, um, what the Y, everybody has their place in Marquette. Everybody does a wonderful job in Marquette. And we don't take something from somebody else. We take it away to try to do something for somebody else, you know, switch it around. We love our senior center the way it is. The seniors deserve it. Yes, we'd like it cleaner. Yes, we'd like it painted. Yes, we'd like a big screen TV. But we don't need a million dollar new facility. Um, I'm here representing other people too. In fact, is I, I'm talking off the cuff because I didn't know about this until about three o'clock today. And I don't know if I've used up my time or whatever, but a lot of things that ha have to be done have to be done for this city hall also. It's not just the senior center. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Do not applause. No applauses, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seeing uh, no one else. Okay. She didn't ask. Hey, ma'am. Ma'am, you uh, you have to wait. Huh? Okay, go ahead. I was just saying, take your time coming up. <laughs> well, that was certainly sufficient time. <laughs> I'm the one that has a little difficulty with walking, <laughs> and it gets worse from year to year, so I don't know when I, whether I could use any facility efficiently. I'm also a physical education minor. I've, I've been very, very active in athletics. I'm an outdoors person, and I'm very limited now. <laughs> uh, my name is Echo Dibert, just in case you didn't know. And I live over at the Tourville Apartments on Lincoln. My address is Garfield, so try to find me. It'll be a little difficult. Do you have any idea how many elderly women particularly walk over here from Snowbound or from their neighborhoods, right, from the residences right here in town? Have you ever stood and watched to see what they're doing? They're actively coming. You say, mm, last time I brought this up at one of the meetings, I was told, well, they'll have buses. Well, how do these people get to where the buses will pick them up to take them out to the Lakeview Arena? And after they get there, if they have any trouble with their feet, knees down, nerve damage, I'll tell you what, you cannot walk safely anywhere. Don't confine me to a wheelchair until you absolutely see me crawling across the floor. I want to walk. And I'll tell you, those wooden floors my friend mentioned are a utopia experience. You step on wood and it's so different from any kind of a dense sur Oh, I've got people on the committee here <laughs> that are nodding with me. Oh, of course, you see, I used to play basketball, so I love a wooden surface. And I can't play anymore, but I still love a wooden surface. That must sound just like nostalgia only. It's not. 
It's a practical thing. And stop throwing away our old buildings because they need something. I'm an old building and I need something. <laughs> you know, I don't know where people get ideas to be able to add something for us that we don't want. I don't know where you get the ideas. You're young and you're still running. Come on now. Get realistic and live with us. Come on. I'll share my couch. <laughs> you come and live with me for a couple of weeks and tend my garden. I still hobble to my garden. I raise a garden every summer at Tourville's. They provide for me. How about community gardens? Add that to the agenda and help some people to recognize that they can still live viable lives and they could probably walk to them. There might be an old building needs to be torn down in the area. And how about beautifying the bike walks here in town? And they w let people. Ma'am. Yes. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Let's everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> you can still do it. There will come a time when you can't. Please, let us be who we are. We love the senior center. Just before you leave, ma'am, ma'am, just for the records, could we have your name and your physical address just for the city clerk? My name is Echo Dibert, 906 Garfield, apartment 8. Thank you, ma'am. Marquette, Michigan, 49855. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. And with that, I'll turn this over to my. I'll turn this over to my fellow commissioners, uh, Commissioner Schneider. I'd like to to ask a question of city staff before we make a motion on this, uh, if I may. The sure. the recommendation. Your Honor, I would move we suspend the rules for debate before making a motion. Very good. Support. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Ryan, and support by Commissioner Coyne to suspend the rules. Thank you. All aye. in favor say yes. aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Motion passed. Uh, motion passed, seven to zero. You have the floor, Commissioner Snyder. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan, for suspending the rules so I can bring up this point of discussion. Um, the recommendation coming from, from city staff and from what I understand ostensibly the uh, senior service task force is to accept the study um, and the recommended priority. But what I'm curious about is if we accept this study and the recommended priority, what are we doing with it? Where is it going from here? Um, you know, this is, regardless of what it is, there's a huge budget. There will be a lot of work to be done. So uh, if we pass this, where does it go? City manager. Thank you. Uh, all you're doing is accepting the study as they recommended it. Uh, you, you're not accepting their uh, or, or uh, endorsing any one of the recommendations, you're accepting the study with the priorities that they forwarded. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Nemi, you still have to. Well, uh, Commissioner Schneider. Okay, Commissioner Schneider. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I'm done. That just seems, it seems like a big discussion of where we could be going with something for merely accepting a study and saying thank you for the year and a half of work. Thank you, Commissioner Snyder. Uh, Commissioner Stonehouse? I'd like to motion to accept the UP Engineering and Architects uh, City of Marquette Senior Center study and recommended priority as provided by the Senior Service Task Force motion. Thank you. Is there a second? There's a motion by Commissioner Stonehill, second by Commissioner uh, Coyne. Commissioner Stonehill? Well, only that it's a good study, uh, certainly a good recommendation. Uh, we have been following it for some time as they've been going through the motion, not the motions, as they've been going through the process of community involvement and, and trying to come up with, uh, with viable plans. Um, we all understand that this is exactly what it is, a, a recommendation, a study, uh, a report and that we will ultimately have to deal with it uh, come next budget time to see how we want to proceed. 
Uh, so certainly we could have a lot of good discussion on it. We have had a lot of good discussion on it, but I think this is a point where we just take the report and uh, begin to, to work it through next budget cycle. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Coyne. Well, thank you. I, I would like to thank the task force. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you did a lot of work and you, uh, I was a new commissioner when you presented the Lakeshore option, which I found unacceptable size-wise and just kind of icky in terms of the the place. I mean, it's just not a, a place where I would want to go and say, I want to be here. And it just wasn't, and I didn't think it was going to meet the needs of the senior center. But I think I understand fully you were trying to, figure out a way to have an affordable project uh, and right. I appreciate that and I appreciate your work. <clears throat> I would like to ask you a question. You mentioned there are three types of seniors on the horizon. Would you describe what three types of seniors there are? Sure. Um, my In my field I, I've been in home health care for 20 years. Uh, I in my experience and, and Paul and CR and I we've all discussed that that we deal with three distinctive <coughs> seniors, and the, you can't define the age, but there's a younger senior who really doesn't realize uh, or, or is not, a, I don't want to say they're oblivious, but they're really not aware of, of when and how they're going to be able to use the senior center, and that's the young senior. Some of them come to the senior center, but pr most of them don't. The, the majority of the young senior, I will say 50 to 70, 65, 70, don't come to the senior center. Then you have a middle senior who... Um, is probably more active in the senior center, uh, who participates in the senior center, and it, it, you know a guesstimate of age would be between 60 and 75. Uh, the older seniors that we have, very few that come to the senior center, are the ones who are more frail. Um, a lot of them don't come to the senior center, but we have the, all those aspects that we have to look at as we go through our. Um, process of how we're picking and you know then we look at the the fourth senior which is the one that we have to project the future and we are really trying to project the future because what we're what we were looking at in the senior center was not an old tired old building we were looking for something that would a, a gym for the city is what we we're looking for a gym for the city something nice that's what we're looking oh, for we're really okay. looking at an overall community center as well okay right well, um, <clears throat> let me just pursue that. Uh, I, I agree. I think Jason raises an excellent point if we say, okay, thank you very much and <laughs> don't do anything. I mean, you kind of, that's kind of not too productive. Um, uh, <clears throat> I was not, I am not, I'm a senior. I'm 76 years old and I, I don't, I'm not even sure I personally vision myself as a younger senior, but I had to go look at senior centers to see what they were like, and I would like to describe my visits to uh, my fellow commissioners <clears throat> because it was very educational. <clears throat> Particularly the impression I went away from after visiting them uh, were, was that it was the senior centers were really owned uh, and viewed very intensely like the people who spoke tonight, it's theirs and to have seven people say, okay, well, thank you, but we don't care, we're gonna do this. That, that's not that gonna work, it's not gonna work. Um, particularly Gwyn is in a really old building, but it's a wonderful place because it is a senior community, it's a community center, not a senior center. And well, I was spent about th three, uh, four hours there, and there were high school kids playing hooky, coming in to play basketball, and they got kicked out, but they came back later. There were young people uh, there as volunteers, student nurses, and, and, and then people of the four class, the three classes you said. And they valued that as a community center. Same with Nagani. Interestingly, Nagani built that by their own community money. They did not do it on taxes. And I heard the lady with a long list of things that don't want your taxes raised, but I mean, we don't have a mimeograph machine to print money. We ha use your tax money to do those things. So I think that's a real example of a community and they really value that. I mean, it's theirs and they're very proud of it. <coughs> And then the last, well, not the last one, but the one in Marquette. I wasn't overly proud of how we provide 
a, a, a community center for the various seniors, and I think it needs to be changed and needs to be upgraded. And the last one was Rochester, Michigan, which is the world-class community center, but primarily senior center, supported by tax dollars and a millage um, and private contributions. So in summary, I hope that we don't just not do anything and say thank you very much. I think the point, I think, it, it, let me use an example. The Peter White Public Library, all of you sitting there who don't want to move, remember how small Peter White Public Library was and inadequate, okay? And when we started expand uh, w the, the dream of making that a wonderful place, there were people, well, we don't need it, libraries are dead, there's nothing wrong with this library, you're all a bunch of idiots, you know, we can't raise the money. Well, now look at that library. It is, it is you, I am sure, are proud of that library. I'm proud of that library. It's a wonderful place. And the community owns it. I mean, that's our library. And do you think it's better than what it was? Absolutely. It's spectacular. My view is why can't we have the same thing for you as seniors, okay? And you're going to, and I think by supporting this motion, a new building to me is the way to go. Not go to Lakeview Arena, not build a, a, a Band-Aid and, and to not do anything. I think this isn't going to happen overnight. If we get going on this, it may take five years or ten years to get a community center that you will be love in love with and located where you want it. And I think this is a first step. I think uh, the commission and uh, really ought to begin to look at visioning that and including you in that and including you with ideas where should it be and not this is it we don't want to move etc because the other thing the most important thing i learned was it's not just about walking on wood floors there are three social workers that work there and have a full caseload who are helping people who need assistance and need advice and need help um, uh, to to live and that is probably half of what senior citizen centers do and, and that it's more than just walking and it's more than playing cards it's a community support system for three different sets of kind of seniors so i would hope the commission would do what i did and that is go look so you have some empathy for what this is and have some vision down the road either by taxes or uh, the community coming up with money to do it because if you can have a quality library like that why can't you have a senior citizen that's even better than the library I, I challenge you with that rather than just say we don't want to do anything or paint that's that's not going to work we I think we should do that I mean how hard is it to get a you know, crew together and paint, or a service club to paint, or to put a Wi-Fi in. I mean, that's th those things we need to hear, and we, you know, we can slip that in the budget while the manager isn't looking and uh, do some nice things. But I think we need to have some vision, and and I tend to support this for a new building, and it's not going to be you know just done tomorrow because the bottom line is we don't have any money okay we don't have any money to build a fire station a new fire station and we don't have any money to do this but we got to get it going to do it and we will do it i think so thank you for listening to me and i would hope you'd go visit the senior centers even though there's a couple young people on it here and who probably don't understand <coughs> thank you commissioner coin commissioner Nimi. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I have one question. Uh, I noticed that the uh, motion was approved five to, five to two. Can you kind of summarize what the dissension was, what their what their concerns were? I'll let Ciora talk okay. about that. Come on, Can up, I Ciora. speak to that, please. Ciora Hull, twenty two twenty seven Wilkinson. I am a member of the task force. Uh, I think. I know for a fact that the biggest deal that the two votes against it were the fact that 99% of the people who attended our community meetings um, took the time and the energy to come out and tell us as a task force what they wanted are represented right here. The people who are using this center, it belongs in their hearts. 
and they're not willing to give it up. I agree with Commissioner Coyne that we need to look in the future and it's up to you guys as a commission to start that process. But I don't see why in the meantime we can't put a task force together, a group of painters in coveralls and fix up what they've got just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a half a million dollar fix. They deserve it. They've been dealing with, I challenge every one of you to walk in and out of the men's and women's restrooms down there. Seriously, within a week's time you can do it, it's downstairs. Go see what they have been living with. There's a shower curtain that covers the handicap stall. How cool is that? We deserve as seniors to have something right now that's not quite so gross but at the same time accept that yeah we need to move forward into the future and have something that the city can be proud of like the library is any more questions uh, maybe i got to ask some more of my fellow commissioners so if you want to stand by uh, commissioner Namey. thank you um i I, I like Commissioner Coyne's uh, comments. I think we, we do need to move forward on this. I don't think we, we certainly don't want to let it languish. Um, I do have a little concerns with the, the recommendation, though. You know, we, we don't have any phys physical effects here, yet in the newspaper I read about the physical effects. I'd forgotten what, the, what some of the numbers were. I had uh, kind of an idea. But fortunately, the, the paper had it because our staff didn't put it in this recommendation, and I, I wish they would have. Um, we're talking about $1.2 million for a new building. Uh, 800,000 for, or 600,000 for a, or 800,000 for a Lakeview Arena, which the, the people obviously don't want, and, and I think the location could be problematic, and, and uh, five work. or 600,000 to, to renovate the existing location. And I, I do have concerns whether that would, it, you know, there, there is some, an attachment to it certainly, and I, I don't mean to, to minimize that, um, but I, I have concerns that perhaps it, for the for the future whether that would really work for us. Um, one thing I think we, we ought to keep in mind in this process, and when the the commission back in I don't remember what year it was approved uh, a special election for for senior millage for for the senior centers, support senior programs. At that time, and I don't remember if it was part of the the motion or whether it was just discussion surrounding the motion, but there was a a. Uh, in my mind, an implied promise that they were going to go to our surrounding townships and say, well, hey, you know, this is working for us. We're serving your citizens, and we see it every week when, when we get the counts. You know, why don't they kick in a little for, for the, the center for programming? And certainly if we spend $1.2 million on, the, on a new building, uh, that uh, they ought to kick in something for that that's you know that's part of the reason that the success of the library is we have surrounding townships that are are supporting it and, and paying paying their fair share the the senior millage fund only has probably a uh, uh, couple hundred thousand dollars in in their their retained earnings so it's going to take a long time for that to build up to to the point where we can we can do it and and it'd be nice and actually we could take the probably the, the the millage from the hospital and we could we could do it in one year or two years for a new thing and we wouldn't have to even bond for it but pardon well we haven't spent we haven't spent next year's yet <laughs> can, can I make some <laughs> corrections on that senator yes. I mean I, um, commissioner Nimi that that 1.25 million was the recommend or the figures from UPE and a but that did not include property Right. And that was based on a, a freestanding so building. Maybe 1.4, 1.6. Could, yeah, and depending if we have any property that, that the, city the city already does owns. Have property. Uh, the other figure you said was 800000 for the renovation of Lakeview is actually a little over 500000 Okay. Yeah, that was a misprint. So. Is, it the, is it the reverse? Is the, the existing, what is it for the existing senior center? 670000 Okay. But the primary cost of that is the elevator. Yeah. So, you know, you, you changing the elevator and, and redoing the parking to make to make 11 spots is what I think that was uh, the m primary cost. Um, well, with the with the sleeping dragon list of 38 million, I don't know where we're going to get the money for for this. <laughs> but we have in our budget 38 million dollars in, in in things that we haven't funded yet. So. Well, but fortunately, I, we weren't tasked with no. where the dollars were coming from. Just the recommendations <laughs> that we thought right. would be good. <laughs> so. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Nemi, Commissioner Ryan. 
Oh, boy, I'm not sure where to go here. First of all, I have a, a kind of a problem with the motion and that not not Fred's motion, but the recommendation. It it says that we're endorsing the priorities in my in my vision and my understanding of it. And, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready to jump to that yet. And, and you know, clearly I shouldn't say clearly, but it, it appears nobody likes number two. So I'm not even sure why it's on the list. So that would be a reason I wouldn't want to support this to begin with. Um, the, you know, the real concern in listening to all the discussion is, and, and by the way, somebody accused some of us as being young, and I haven't been that way for a long time. So with, I'm not quite with Commissioner Coyne, but darn close. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, in that category. But, um, you know, the problem with the, the new building is we say that would be great, but, 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 you know, and, and I'm afraid those buts are pretty big. And um, <laughs> that probably Thank isn't you. an appropriate thing to say, but <laughs> <coughs> I was referring to the BUT. <laughs> Um, so, I, you know, I'm not sure we're being fair when we do that because, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it's in a, in a perfect world. It's something we could probably do, but, you know, the likelihood of it happening doesn't sound very good. And then we hear w what the conditions are like now, you know, and, and uh, does that mean we just kind of ignore that and start planning for something in the future? There's a lot to this issue, and I do, you know, I, I do think it's important even, you know, for our existing seniors to think about the fact that, we have to think about the next generation and the next generation and what their interests will be and you know they may want something different and and you know so we've we should be keeping those kinds of things in mind too but um you know I, i'm just you know I, i'm just concerned that that the only option that may work is number three may i ask a question oh. You have the floor, but you can't ask us questions. No, she has to go through you. She I mean, I can, I can. You can, yeah. You create can sentences, me. but not questions. You're representing the task force, so I think it's a little bit this different. But I think if you this just made true. a statement, it might be. Yeah, this so, isn't a colloquy. Oh, a this is not a colloquy between people out here and the people here. There's a motion on the floor. It's being debated. And at some point, I think uh, once the commission gets done with its questions, then they ought to take a vote on this motion. Okay. She has the floor at this time. Okay. No, time out. Commissioner Schneider. <laughs> well, I'm certainly hoping that we can call the question soon. Um, I really appreciate a lot of the conversation that, that's come up because I think it really, it it hits on a lot of the issues that that we're faced with where the agenda actually is fairly simple compared to the issues that are at hand um, and I would like to make a motion that we amend this um, to just merely accepting the senior center study and not accepting any of the priorities we're in a situation where you know giving priority to a new building or existing location is kind of irrelevant when we have a sleeping dragons list of 38 million dollars Clearly, number two, uh, there's really no support for it. So it seems like number one or number three is really what we need to be looking at. But I think we should just merely accept the study um, and not, uh, not <coughs> deal with the priority. So I'm hoping that there's a second to my motion to amend. If, if I could uh, just address. I'll second the motion. No. I'll, I'll second the motion. OK. Second. Commissioner Schneider. I think I said everything that, that I meant to in, in making the actual motion itself. So I'll let the question stand. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Ryan. I, I think we can we can do what Commissioner Schneider is recommending and, and, and moving uh, and, and still um, accept the uh, report from the commission, from the from the task force. We're we're accepting their report. And we understand that they have established priorities in there. But we're not saying at this point that we uh, accept those priorities as our own. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cabanzi? I would agree with that, and that was one thing I was going to bring up. I did attend one of the planning sessions, and I did not see, I don't think, but maybe two or three stickers on the Lake Lakeview Arena. Um, 
project. I think what was hard about the planning sessions is that there was this kind of vision that maybe we could build a new new center, but that really wasn't the focus and it really wasn't, there wasn't a lot of data to try and explain how it would happen or what that would look like. And I, before I go further, I do want to thank Stan, Paul, and everyone on the task force and certainly everyone that's came here tonight and put their opinions in. I would agree with Commissioner Schneider. I think we should recommend accepting the report without the the order that it lists. And I'd also just like to make a brief comment on the fact that I think we can find a way to fund this and and I'm not sure how long it will take, but I think it's something that our community would stand behind like the library. I, I appreciate Commissioner Coyne's comments. I want it to be someplace that all of us are proud of and all of you are proud of and everyone else that's going to be there, I'll be there someday. And it's, it's a place that really it, it, we should take a lot of pride in. We should take our time. But I also think tomorrow I'm going downstate to look at, or Wednesday, an auditorium that a community donated $7 million to renovate. Just an auditorium. But they did it with the community and very, very, very little taxpayer money. So I think it can be done. I don't know when, but I think if we start now, like Commissioner Coyne said, we'll get there and we'll have a place that everyone can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse? I was just going to say, as a motion maker, I think I have a say in this. <laughs> and um, I, I certainly do accept it. Um, I, I think that's a good amendment, good way of solving our, our problem in terms of trying to get the priorities straight. And obviously what we need to do is the best we can for the seniors. I mean, the issue is just going to be how we get there, how we do that. And I think as everyone has indicated, that's going to be uh, take some real imagination and some real creativity, I think, to figure out how to make it all work and what is best. And uh, it's something that we're not going to be able to solve tonight. So I would suggest that we look forward at moving the question and, and moving on with the city business and perhaps setting either work sessions or other sessions when we can focus strictly on this issue and then figure out how to try and get there. Thank you. Commissioner Coyne. Well, I'm not going to support the amendment because I really, <laughs> I really think the vision should be a new building. It doesn't have to be a new building, new building. It could be a renovated existing building. There's buildings that come up periodically that would be excellent for that. Um, I think this building is not exactly the Taj Mahal and some, do some, some way down the road they may begin to think of we need a new city hall uh, and a new city hall slash community center slash senior center. I, I really think we ought to concentrate on this new building idea uh, and I'm not going to support the uh, amendment even though I know I'm going to lose it's just principle so okay thank you Commissioner Ryan you have anything no I, th I think we should just go ahead and vote okay any other commissioner okay uh, at this time there's a motion by Commissioner Schneider seconded by Commissioner Ryan to that's accept a recommendation that's a motion to amend to amend the original motion the original motion the original motion was to accept the study and the recommended priority the amended uh, the motion that was amended uh, was <coughs> to accept the study but not the priority and that's what you're voting on okay thank you is that what you understand Commissioner Schneider correct Commissioner Ryan yes okay with that I'll ask a question all in favor say yes yes yes, yes. Opposed? no hey. no Okay, the motion passes five to two, showing uh, Commissioner Coyne and Commissioner Namey uh, voting no. Thank you. So now the main motion is to accept the study but not the priority. Right. Commissioner Ryan. And I would phrase that a little differently. I would say to accept the, the study but to not include the priorities in our accepting motion because yeah, you know that was shorthand that's better said yeah because we're not we're not necessarily saying we don't accept the priorities we're, we're saying we're, well we, we aren't accepting any priorities this <laughs> guy 
It's getting too late here. I, I just want to say something, and, and that is I really appreciate the work the task force has done, and, and anything I've said should not be taken as anything but that. But I think, you know, if we're going to go to a new building, and I, you know, I agree with Commissioner Coyne, I think we've got to build toward that. I think we have to work toward that. We have to get people on board with that. There's a, there's, there's a lot that has to happen before we get there. And I think the way to do that is to accept this report, which puts a, a, a report before us with some targets and some ideas. And, you know, it's a place to start, you know. And, and, I, and I, think, I, I think we really have to move forward from here. And, you know, whether it's a new building or, or fixing up the old building or fixing up a new old building, you know, I, I think we've got to move in some direction, and, and hopefully this will give us the opportunity to do that. But we have to get people on board. You know, it's, 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 it can't be the seven people here deciding what's in the best interest, even though that's what they elect us to do. You know, we have to somewhat listen to what they say, too. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Is there a second? No, no, there's no motion. Okay. That was just a speech. Oh, okay. <laughs> Commissioner Coyne. Well, I'd like to make a speech, too. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to vote for the motion because I think we should accept the priority. And I would like to just say an anecdotal statement. Um, when Prior to the library being built, I was uh, appointed to the library board. And my major goal of going there was to not support the nine million dollar expansion I was adamantly against it that's why I went on there that was the stupidest thing I ever thought heard of nine million dollars for a new library well <coughs> I did I I did at the the library director basically forced me to go look at libraries that were renovated just like Peter White library it convinced me I have done the same thing for senior centers and I am convinced we need a new senior center and I am also convinced that this community will support it financially so I am strongly supportive of the committee's recommendations I don't like taking out the priority because I really think that this community will do this down the road so my, my I'd have to explain my no vote I am very supportive of a new one and supportive of this recommendation so thank you thank you Commissioner Ryan I just want to emphasize again that I believe the new motion says we are accepting this report that's what it says Commissioner Namey I, I view the new motion as we're accepting the report from UPEA but we're not accepting the report from the senior task force and I I had the same trepidations that Commissioner Ryan had about the, the, the priorities. Um, and, I, and I think Commissioner Coyne makes a good point. I, I'm concerned where, where are we going to go from here? Maybe staff is going to tee up a, another item in the, in the near future of, of looking at priorities so we, so we can move forward with this. Our senior task force has done a lot of work. Uh, our senior citizens have, have invested a lot of time, and I'm sure we'll invest a lot more time. But I'd like to see us move forward on this at some point. And, and I, I'm concerned that the, the issue might languish if all we do is accept the engineering report and not accept the priorities, although I don't necessarily agree with the priorities as, as such. But uh, uh, so I'll, I'll vote no against the motion, but I certainly uh, support the, the, senior, the senior center. Commissioner Coyne. Could, could I ask the clerk to read back what the motion is? Because I'm not sure uh, that we're limiting it to accepting the UP engineering and architects report. Would you read it back? Okay, with the amendment, uh, my understanding was, or I think the intent of the motion was uh, to accept the UPEA and Arch um, City of Marquette Senior Center study, but without the recommended priorities. That correct. Anything further, commissioners? Seeing none, there's a motion in the second. Did you want to read that one more time, City Clerk? Or are you all right? No, I don't commissioners think he does. all right. All <laughs> in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? No. no. Motion passes five to two. Shown uh, Commissioner Neamey and Commissioner Coyne voting no. Thank you. With that, we'll move to number 13, <coughs> High School Student Committee Representatives. City Clerk. Yes, Your Honor. 
background, the city has conducted community meetings for high school students at MSHS in 2013. One outcome was to invite the MSHS Student Council to appoint members to sit with the City Commission during the April 29th regular City Commission meeting. The response from the Student Council and the City Commission members was very positive and the additional efforts to provide MSHS students with the opportunity to participate in City Affairs was war warmly encouraged. To this end, the MS MSHS Student Council suggested they would like to appoint their own MSHS student representatives to five city appointed committees that most, close, most closely address student interests and needs. Their interest would be, would be to have the city officially accept these <coughs> representatives as ex officio non-voting attendees, uh, one primary and with one alternate, to the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, the Harbor Advisory Committee, Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, Presque Isle Park Advisory Committee, and uh, the Sustainable Community Ad Hoc Committee. Fiscal effect none by this action recommendation consider uh, recognizing that student representatives from MSHS as ex, ex officio attendees at the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, Harbor Advisory Committee, Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, Presque Isle Park Advisory Committee, and the Sustainable Community Ad Hoc Committee for a period ending for a period ending June 1, 2014, with alternatives as determined by the Commission. Thank you, City Clerk. Commissioner Ryan, uh, Nimi. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that uh, we adopt the recommendation recognizing student representatives from Market Senior High School as ex officio members at the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, Harbor Advisory Committee, Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, Presque Isle Park Advisory Committee, and Sustainable Community Ad Hoc Committee meetings for a period ending <coughs> June 1, 2014. Thank you. Commissioner Nemi, is there a second? Uh, Commissioner Convency? Commissioner uh, Nemi, anything further? Well, I just I think it's a, a great opportunity for additional students to get involved in, in the, the workings of their city. And uh, I, unless something untoward happens in the next year, I can't see, see it, it not continuing on into the future. Thank you. Commissioner Convency? Well, I'd just like to thank the high school students for wanting to be part of what we are here at the city and, and join our committees. I think they have a lot to offer. I think sometimes we forget to take their considerations into account when we look at things, so I'm glad to have them on board. And I do want to thank the mayor and the city manager for, again, reaching out to these groups and extending an open invitation to be part of, of what we do. And I know the city manager had three classrooms of second graders today that he met with here. And, and I, I do want to commend both him and, and our mayor just for um, really opening the doors and especially to our school, school age students. So I'm fully supportive. Thank you, Commissioner Convency. Any other commissioner? Commissioner uh, Schneider. I just want to echo Commissioner Convency's sentiments. I really, really appreciate the work that uh, that the city manager and mayor have gone through to to outreach to the youth of our community. I think it's it's a really wonderful way to get to get them involved. When the high school students were here, they expressed interest in actually getting involved more than just sitting here and listening. And I think this is a really wonderful opportunity as well to thank them for their interest. Thank you very much. Uh, any other commissioner at this time? I totally agree. You should have seen how excited the students were today when they were sitting in the chief of police's chair and spinning around and making faces and in the clerks and the city attorney and the city ma manager they were, they really enjoyed that so anyways thank you again city manager Bill Vida for getting all this set up and with that I'll ask the question there's a motion by Commissioner uh, Nemi seconded by Commissioner Convency to approve agenda number 13 high school student committee representative as presented all in favor say yes yes yes, yes. opposed motion passes seven to zero thank you we'll move uh, city clerk to number 14 professional services agreement with Stewart and Sheridan PLC 
Thank you, Your Honor. Background at its February 25th, 2013 meeting, the City Commission approved a professional services agreement with Stewart and Sheridan PLC in the amount not to exceed $5,000. The purpose of the agreement is to provide legal services for which the city attorney may have a potential conflict of interest regarding certain truck route ordinances and, and environmental regulations. It is anticipated at this time that an additional $3,000 for a total not to exceed amount of $8,000 will be needed in order to complete the work on correspondence with the MDEQ and to work on a truck route ordinance. Fiscal effect, it is anticipated that sufficient funds are in the FY 12-13 budget to cover these services. Recommendation, approve an additional $3,000 for the professional services agreement with Stewart and Chardon PLC alternatives as determined by the commission. Thank you, city clerk. Commissioners? Commissioner Ryan? I move, I move we approve an additional $3,000 for the professional services agreement with Stewart and Sheridan PLC. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Is there a second? Commissioner Nemi? Thank you, Your Honor. I'll second the motion. Commissioner Ryan? Clerk, explain the uh, purpose of the expenditure, and this is extending the contract we have. I think it's uh, important that we move forward. Thank you. Commissioner Nemi? I just have a comment. It's a small thing, but I appreciate the, the uh, notation, the additional money, and the total money that that will result in in the agenda background I think that's very helpful thank you any other commissioner at this time seeing none there's a motion by Commissioner Ryan seconded by Commissioner Nemi to sect, accept a recommendation of agenda number 14 as read all in favor say yes yes yes, yes. yes. Opposed? motion passes seven to zero thank you number 15 Rules and regulation for City of Marquette Marinas and boat launching facilities. City Clerk. Yes, Your Honor. Background. The City Commission has adopted rules and regulations for City of Marquette Marinas and boat launch facilities. The Harbor Advisory Committee is requesting the City Commission consider amending Rule Number 3.08, Seasonal Slip Assignment Procedures and Policies. The proposed language allows a seasonal slip holder to relinquish their slip for any given season and be offered that slip for a subsequent season. The slip holder is entitled to a refund only if the slip is placed back under uh, placed back under lease. Refunds are limited by Michigan Department of Natural Resources Waterways Harbor Slip Management Policy 9.1 Section VD. Fiscal effect. <coughs> there is no fiscal effect with this action. Recommendation. Adopt Rule 3.08 Seasonal Slip Assignment uh, procedures and policies as amended, alternatives as determined by the Commission. Thank you, City Clerk. Commissioners? Commissioners? With your pleasure. Commissioner Stonehouse? I motion to adopt Rule 3.08 Seasonal Slip Assignment Procedures and Policies as amended. Thank you. That's your second. Commissioner uh, Schneider? Support. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse, anything further? It is largely a procedural rule handling uh, uh, how uh, uh, refunds are uh, handled by the city. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Schneider? No further comment. Thank you. Question? Uh, Commissioner Ryan? Just, you know, I, I don't rent slips, so I don't know, but it, it sounds like if you have a slip and you don't want to use it, you can turn it back in but not lose it for next year. Is that, is that what this says? Is that something that comes up frequently, or that's exactly what we're asking for? What the what the rule is asking for? Um, it does not come up very often. Uh, this will help with some of the uh, slip arrangements that we'll have at Presque Isle, especially during this construction over the next five plus years. Okay, so someone can give up their slip this year, but they have first rights to it next year. Is that what it's saying? Well, it, it says a couple things. Um, Number one is, yeah, they can give up their slip, um, and it's only if they, uh, if there's someone that will lease it, um, that's uh, that's available that can lease it, and they are limited in terms of the refund based upon the rules that uh, Waterways and the DNR provide to us. So there's a couple of caveats in there that they are subject to if, in fact, they want to choose to do that. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Any other commissioner at this time? 
see none i'll ask the question there's a um, motion by commissioner stonehouse seconded by commissioner schneider to accept agenda number 15 recommendation dop rule 3.08 seasonal slip assignment procedures and policies as amended commissioners all in favor say yes 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 yes, yes. Opposed? motion passes seven to zero thank you at this time we'll move to public comment anyone wishing to address the commission at this time anyone wishing to address the commission at this time these are my opinions April 29th, Mr. Coyne motioned to approve the Presque Isle Playground an instant after citizen comment with zero concern for what mature trees, if any, might be lost if the proposed design features, um, if any, would be lost or if the proposed design features would ensconce the playground from adjacent use areas. This is an example of government by testosterone. It's more important to Mr. Coyne to exert his power over people by ignoring them than to cover a land use decision with the thoroughness it deserved. He misused his authority just as he did in the men's room on January 30, 2012. What a shame he chose not to apologize for his blatant misconduct toward a constituent, hence this further detail. As I left the chamber, Mr. Coyne stood in the hallway out of my sight. I rounded the open door and unexpectedly locked eyes with him only two feet away, never breaking my stride. Two minutes later, he stood a foot from me at the bathroom sink, having walked 70 feet for the sole purpose of confronting me. He commenced to call me a little S-word for allegedly sneering at him, and he then added in a soft, creamy intonation, if you ever sneer at me again, something bad is going to happen. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but something bad is going to happen. He then repeated this threat. What Mr. Coyne noticed outside the chamber was a spontaneous reaction to me finding myself face to face with an adversary. No interaction was planned or intended. Chief Angeli later spoke to him and felt the matter was resolved. However, it's not resolved until Mr. Coyne offers his apology and an explanation of what he had in mind when he threatened that something bad would happen. To whom did Mr. Coyne speak that an expression on my face would outrage him to this extent? And do we want a person of Mr. Coyne's nature on the commission, much less making critical decisions on such properties as Hartwood? Five members have lost their cool with me in this building while I've managed to keep calm. Mr. Coyne, Ryan, Stonehouse, St. Ange, and Bradley. It's like going back to high school or elementary school, really, but with real world consequences. Management by testosterone allegedly played a role in the needless drowning at Pitnick Rocks. Exerting your power to ignore someone was literally more important to you than human life. This bears repeating because you continued to ignore warnings last summer leading to a dangerous rescue effort. And you still sat idle until the fire chief finally did your job for you by staging the years requested guard at Pitnick Rocks. When Mr. Ryan complained that he's tired of hearing about Pitnick Rocks, he took ownership of the issue. After all, he's the most influential member, and he was thus in the best position to have suggested action when the drowning was foreseen by everybody who knows that lake. Flagrant negligence with deadly proven results. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Um, I would like to thank the commission for listening to two different presentations by the task force. It was an eye-opening experience for me to participate in. I hope what you will go away from tonight's meeting with is that there's a need for two things. One, you may as well paint and do something with the flooring downstairs and do something with the bathrooms because even if the senior center left in six months, that space is not going to stay vacant. It'll be used for something. So you may as well do it now while the cost is less than it would be in five years. And two, please proceed somehow along with the vision of creating a new senior center, community center, city hall accommodation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? I just want to reinforce the positive things that everybody had to say about what went on earlier. Um, I think that um, uh, Dr. Coins 
thought for the future is a good one. Oh, um, you need my name and everything. <laughs> name the physical address. Thank you. <laughs> Margaret Turner, 1110 North 7th Marquette. But anyway, just to go back to that, I think um, accepting the study that they had done and so forth was a good thing. But truly, we do have to look ahead, look at the changes, just like he said about the library. And um, I think it's probably going to be a little while before anybody's ever out of this building. And I think the heating and all those other things that go on in here affect the whole building. So it probably is a good thing to have done just for the sake of the building, as well as the seniors that come here every day. And I like the wooden floors, I have to tell you. It's the best place to walk. But thanks for all you do and all you put up with. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Anyone else wishing to address the commission at this time? Seeing none, I'll close this portion of public comment. Turn it over to my fellow commissioners for their commissioner comment. Uh, commissioner Stonehouse. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, good discussion tonight, certainly on a number of topics. Senior Center uh, the headlining it, I think, and, and how important it is that we, we take the time to get that right. And I, I remember uh, several months ago, I was, I think, the fellow who suggested that we really need to look at a new center. We need to look at something that is state-of-the-art and kind of keep projecting that ahead to, to where we're going to be. Um, let me wander back to EMS signs a little bit because that was a great discussion too, I thought, and I was not here for the work session. My apologies for that, but I felt it was very important that we all have an opportunity to, to let the public know in a very uh, open way as, as to where our thoughts are with that topic. It, it is important. Uh, I did have received a number of comments regarding uh, EMS signs uh, in the downtown area, and from my record, they're running about 39 to 2 against and the two I received were from a couple of business guys I think that have been doing cut and paste because they were heartily recommending that we follow the uh, the dictates uh, of the uh, US sign and I lost it here the US sign council so I happily went online looked up the US sign council and find out it's the lobbying group for the professional sign makers and when you look at their board of directors, it has 18 good uh, citizens on it, each one of them representing a sign company. And this group apparently has never, ever found a sign that isn't big enough or bright enough. So, um, you know, we need to, we need to pay care with, with where some of this stuff is coming from. I would also point out that the EMS issue is, uh, is more than just a flashing sign because it really speaks to who we are as a, as a city and how we value our downtown and how we want others to value it too. And if, uh, if the idea is just to make it into a flashing neon jungle, I'm sure we can do that, uh, or LED jungle. If the idea is to keep it the very distinctive destination that it is and with all of the accolades it has won over time and how well people in the city, I think, really, really treasure that downtown, then we need to, we need to keep uh, the vandals at the gates. We truly do. The argument that uh, if we don't allow an ordinance that uh, that would allow EMS uh, signs downtown, then somehow we would be cheating ourselves of future changes that would be good for us, is really very illusionary uh, from the standpoint that if somebody comes up with a product that is bigger, better than ever, that adapts to downtown, that we all like, we just change the ordinance. It, it's not an issue. Uh, so we're not robbing ourselves of any, certainly of any technology. I would also call the public's attention to just doing a simple Google search and look at the number of communities out there that have banned these signs outright for being dangerous and derogatory to their cities. There's even states out there that are considering doing that too. So this is a national issue and we're only seeing part of it here in downtown. But we need to be very careful with the folks that are advocating for more and bigger and brighter signs and kind of selling us a little, uh, a little bit of pixie dust, I think. Uh, on two happier subjects, um, I was up at the Presque Isle today watching the dredging work going on and, and they're, they're really moving out very nicely. If you haven't seen it, it's worth taking the drive up and just watching these guys work. They're, they're doing well. Uh, one item of pedophoguerish interest is we've had several references to wooden floors and indeed they are very comfortable. If you've ever worked, gone through an old time, old time, I'll say a 1980s style uh, automobile plant 
where they did the heavy floor manufacturing and the conveyor belt systems, et cetera, those floors were always made of wood. And they were made with four by four blocks turned on end. And the idea of that was that it was much easier for the workers standing long hours on that type of a wooden floor that had some give to it, as opposed to having a poured concrete. So indeed, the accolades that folks have mentioned with wooden floors is very real and very science-based from the automobile industry. Mr. Mayor, thank you for the time. Thank you, Commissioner Stonehouse. Commissioner Ryan. Well, I guess I'll just weigh in on the signs a little bit too. Um, th this is one of those nights, you know, sometimes we have a lot of good discussion and I feel good about it tonight. It's kind of, eh, I'm not so sure. We'd, some good things happened. You know, I'm glad to see the uh, bed and breakfast going forward. I'm, you know, pleased to see uh, what's happening with the, the rowing club. I think those are good things. Signs, you know, there's a lot of open questions there and, and also the senior citizen uh, issue as well. On the signs, um, you know, I too do not want to see our downtown changed with electronic signs. And I think it's pretty clear that's what the public wants. I mean, they don't want the signs. They don't want the town changed with electronic signs. And I, I would strongly support that. Here's what's going to happen going forward. You know, we, we have a central business district, which is primarily Washington and Front Streets. And uh, you're, we're going to have to look at, is that district going to be ex extended when the Viridia project comes on? Right now, we kind of look at maybe up to 7th Street as, a, as the DDA district. Um, Maybe we want to extend that, and, and uh, maybe not. That's the kind of issue we'll have to look at. Third Street, how does that fit into the picture? There's a great planning process going on this week uh, for Third Street. They've brought in an outstanding organization to look at Third. How does Third tie into the downtown, and you know how does that relate to the rest of the city as far as signs go? But you know, I too would very firmly be on the side of uh, not having electronic message sign uh, message centers. Um, in the downtown area. On the senior citizen one, it's um, it's kind of a tough issue. You know, the, the task force put a lot of work into it, and I wish we could just jump on top of it and say go. Um, you know, it, it, clearly the, the seniors don't see Lakeview Arena as a, as a real option. So within that study, it comes down to a new building or fixing up the old one. Frankly, I think we probably have to do both, you know. I, I think we have to do some work on the existing center, get it in some kind of shape, and then look to uh, something better down the road, but getting the community buying into it and part of it and understanding it. Um, and it's going to take some time to do that. So that's it for tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Uh, Commissioner Coyne. Well, thank you. Uh, I did enjoy the debates this evening. Even though I was on the losing end of a couple, I still enjoyed it. Um, and uh, just a comment about the signs. Um, I think it's particularly important for me to the plan. I, I'm really happy this discussion took place because I think uh, the Planning Commission needs to be sent our minutes to have them understand how all, all of you feel about that. And I think an important issue is, um, <clears throat> you know, you have different lobbies, uh, uh, the sign makers, uh, community people who hate signs and uh, I think it's critical for the uh, Planning Commission to listen to the DDA I mean and I have not seen I don't know if you have any communication from any DDA members who said yippee for electronic signs downtown I mean I have not seen that in the district so I, I think that needs to be uh, carried through with the uh, Planning Commission um, and uh, a note to Fred about wooden uh, floors. Uh, when I, I will be a big advocate when the new senior citizen center is built, <coughs> that they have wooden floors for people to walk on. Okay, that'll be a, a campaign plank for me. Okay, uh, and I think it's a valid thing. Uh, all you, uh, I know, Tan and I walk at the dome, and that's not comfortable. Uh, it's awful, but uh, wood and I. Whenever they have the grass down, I try to walk on the grass, the artificial turf. But it's hard on the feet. And uh, again, I, I hope this is a seed to get that going down the road. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Coyne. Commissioner Kambanzi. Thank you. I, I do want to bring up first the Better Buildings for Michigan. I did take part in that project. It was very successful. Um, 
I think they are creating a market after the program. I know there's several projects that are on my radar now, um, but it's nice to have that data. And, and I do see a lot of people utilizing either the loans or the rebates that they offer. So I'd like to thank them for coming here and I guess looking at how well Marquette did, that says a lot about our community. I'd like to thank the UP Rowing Club. I look forward to them having even more of a presence on our lakeshore. I think they're a great asset to that. I'd like to bring up a new project, and that is something that the uh, Market Area Public Schools Special Education Department is working on. It's called Project Search. And what it is, it's a program to help find graduating seniors um, who have disabilities work for a year. And it, I, many of you remember the Work Center. This would be something that would allow people to come into businesses, public or private, and do an internship. There's money attached to it, but it's a way to keep unemployment rates for this population up, and it's way to, a way to embrace them in our communities. So there is a, an invitation that will be coming out to us in early June to attend an informational meeting on whether or not this is something the city would want to take part in, as well as pass it on to other, other businesses in our area. On the Senior Center, I agree, and I think it was our intent as a commission tonight to look forward and to look at a new vision for the center. I don't think in any way we accepted the proposal and we plan to sit on it. In fact, I'm hoping that it will be a continuous dialogue that comes up when necessary. And the last thing I want to bring up is the sign ordinance. And I've, first I want to appreciate Commissioner, say that I appreciate Commissioner Ryan um, his comments for reminding us about the process because I think that is important that the Planning Commission gets this back um, and looks at it. I'd also like to thank Commissioner Stonehouse for bringing up the areas that many of us, if not all of us, feel should be protected, which is the downtown 3rd Street, Lakeshore Boulevard, and for speaking up about that because I think we do need to send a message that, you know, part of our job is to to certainly be open-minded to change, but it's also our duty to protect the areas and, and protect the things that make Marquette, Marquette. And so who knows what the future will bring, but in my opinion right now, we're not there to incorporate electronic messaging centers in those areas. We may be in the future, but certainly this is something that a planning commission in the future could take a look at again. But I am glad that hopefully we're sending a message back to them that, that we really do want to preserve and protect these areas. And the last thing I'd just like to ask if the city manager could possibly get us the survey results that Mana did. I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Convency. Commissioner uh, Schneider. Well, I definitely want to thank my fellow commissioners. Tonight's been a really good discussion. Um, one that I didn't at the beginning think that I was going to have much patience for. But I think a lot of the conversation that came out was was really good. Um, you know, maybe it's because of the three years tenure that I've had on this commission that I'm starting to get more comfortable with everything. But really, it feels like we've engaged in a lot more dialogue in the last six, eight months than we have ever before since I've been on. And I, I really appreciate it. Um, on both sides. I like hearing things that I don't necessarily agree with. It makes me think. As far as the, the Better Buildings for Michigan program that, that came in and spoke, you know, I think it's great that our residents have taken um, so much participation in it. And sometimes things only come out when you look at them uh, in combination. And it's interesting to hear about the Michigan Saves program and then hear that we have a 40-year-old boiler that's <laughs> keeping our uh, city hall going. Um, I'm hoping that it, with the expanded program that that's something that, that we can look into. Um, the wood floors, al although you know the age stuff has been passed around, I greatly appreciate the wood floors quite a bit because uh, <laughs> we're actually down there on roller skates fairly often. And tell you, when you go down at 20 miles an hour on something, it's a lot nicer to go down on wood floors than it is on concrete. Um, on that note, a community announcement is the, uh, the Market Area Roller Derby Team, the Dead River Derby, is actually having their very first bout this coming Saturday at Lakeview Arena. Doors open at 6 p.m. Game starts at 7. We will be playing Escanaba's team, which has existed for about a year. 
So uh, we're expecting about a thousand people. And, uh, you know, for anybody who's watching out there in TV land and the rest of the commissioners, I hope to see you all there. Thank you, Commissioner Schneider. Commissioner Namey. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think we had some good debate tonight. And I think uh, even though it seemed like we were we were disagreeing on the senior center. I think in, in, in total, I think we, it's, it's by nuance only. And, and I think our, all of us have the, the desired end result of an improved senior center, however we get there. And I think we'll, we're going to have to flesh that out in the future. And, and uh, with that, uh, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Nemi. Uh, I just want to congratulate a couple of the firemen that just got promoted to a recent Due to a recent retirement of Captain Jeff West and uh, Lieutenant Gene Mellows was uh, promoted to uh, rank of captain. He started with the Market Fire Department in February of 1991. Uh, engineer Jeff Hale has been pro uh, promoted to the rank of lieutenant and he was hired as firefighter in the department in 1995. Kurt Hillier was promoted to the position of engineer and uh, Kurt was hired as a firefighter in May of 2001. And Matthew Jackson was promoted to the position of relief engineer. Uh, Matthew was uh, hired as a firefighter in January 2010. So congratulations to all the firefighters that had received uh, their promotions. And uh, some full-time employees uh, Doug Heslip, Detective Sergeant, uh, Market Police Department, 15 years. Lance Hopper, Supervisor, Equipment Maintenance, 15 years. Chris Dalridge, Patrol Officer, and he's got five years in. So congratulations to those guys that are uh, getting their years of service in. And I'd like to congratulate Patrolman Mike Archikowski as being selected as Kiwanis Officer of the Year for 2012. Officer Archikowski has been with the department over six years. And again, I uh, congratulate Mike for being selected by Markets Noon Kiwanis Club. And I thank my fellow commissioners for a meeting that was not boring tonight. And, <laughs> and I know the city clerk uh, did an excellent job of keeping us in line. Uh, thank you, City uh, Attorney, for uh, helping the mayor with the motions and everything else. Uh, our uh, Chief of Police, Mike Angeli, for crowd control. And I'll turn this over to our City Manager, Bill Fida, for uh, City Manager's comment. Thank you, Your Honor. I have nothing further to add. Yeah, okay, thank you. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>